this afternoon on College Football Saturday, presented by Key O'Sara. It's the Washington State Cougars hosting the Washington Huskies. Hi, everybody. I'm Steve Fiziak. This afternoon, we'll be watching the biggest game in the history of Washington State football. Never before have the Cougars been ranked third in the BCS. Never before have the Cougars been ranked third in the polls. And the Cougars, despite Ohio State's victory over Michigan today, they still hold an outside chance of playing for the national championship. Joining me today, former All-American quarterback Tom Ramsey. And Rams, so much riding on this game. Well, Steve, there really is. You talked about the magnitude of the BCS and also the magnitude of the conference championship. Washington State has to take care of business in one of their two remaining games. Mike Price said, hey, Tom, the last thing I'm going to tell them today is have fun. And for Washington, they have to finish strong, Steve. And, you know, no doubt about it today, a lot of offense. And leaders win these types of football games, and both teams have great quarterbacks. Jason Gesser, a senior. Well, it's tough to argue with Jason Gesser's numbers. And when I'm talking about numbers, I'm talking about winning numbers. 19 and 3 over the last two years, only behind Miami and Oklahoma. And on the other side of the coin, you have a great player, a future Heisman contender. Cody Pickett, Steve, is one of the best throwers I've seen in college football. Nine games over 300 yards, three games over 400 yards awfully tough to beat it's apple picking time in the Palouse and somebody wants that whole cup of apples they want the roses as well The final home game for so many great seniors at Washington State as they host the Huskies from Seattle. It is a packed house here at Martin Stadium. Better than 35,000 fans. And Mike Price told us earlier in the week what he wanted to do was cut a hole in the fence outside the stadium and get more people in and have a huge standing room only. But he said the fire marshal said no. Well, at least he's honest, Steve, you know, as Mike Price always is. But but I'm sure he was the one behind the Thundersticks. <laughs> he certainly was. Well, these teams have been playing since 1900 when they played in a 5-5 tie. That's right. Touchdowns were only five points back in 1900. But the Huskies have captured 61 victories. Washington State, 27. And there have been six ties. Washington State is 11 13 and 1 all time at Pullman. But remember this Rip Neuheisel has never lost to the Cougars. He is 4 0 as coach for Washington. And the last time he came here, he had to win this game to go to the Rose Bowl. And they did in resounding fashion 51 to 3. This eight years as an NCAA coach at Colorado and now at Washington and there's Mike Price and Steve just what Rich Walt said at the, at the top of the show Rick Neuhauser wants to finish strong and Price you know what if he wins one of his remaining two he's guaranteed a great bowl game. Well we talked with Mike Price about the importance of winning this football game. Well, I want to win this game here in Pullman because I, these fans and these kids deserve this. We've been sold out every game. The fans have turned out and just cheered their guts out. And uh, I don't want to have to wait two weeks to have to win the championship. We want to win it today, and we want to win it in Pullman. And that's great about Mike Price. He said he was not concerned about the BCS. He was not concerned about Miami or Ohio State playing Michigan today. He said all anybody talks about is the pride of the state of Washington winning this game, beating the Huskies for the Cougars. Rose is on his mind. And Mike Price knows that they have to win one of the next two games, either against the Huskies or at UCLA, or it could be the Trojans 
going to the Rose Bowl. I mean, they're thrashing UCLA today. That's right, Steve. USC has played so well near the end of the season. And we all know championships are won and lost in the month of November. And tell you what, Michigan had their shot today against Ohio State. Ohio State hung in there, played tough at home, and it's how you finish. Every coach says the games to remember are played in November. Washington State won the toss. They deferred their decision to the second half, so the Huskies will be receiving. Charles Frederick and Nate Robinson are back deep and very deep as the kickoff is just thrown through by Drew Dunning. Adam Holliday blasting it through. Here's Cody Pickett, the junior quarterback from Caldwell, Idaho. Great touchdown to interception ratio 25 to 13 but he has wonderful backs and receivers rich Alexis 10 touchdowns Reggie Williams 11 touchdowns those are his big play guys the offensive line only Zajac will be gone he's the lone senior but watch Nick Newton he's 330 pounds and he can power you down the field there's Mr. Pickett 182 yards shy of the first quarterback in Pac-10 history to go over 4,000 yards and he immediately goes for just one yard to Patrick Reddick for his 43rd catch this year. Let's check out the defense for Washington State. This is a terrific defensive line combined. They have 27 sacks. Ryan Long with 12. The linebackers, Dirting, Davis, Bennett, all fast. Davis is their leader, 57 tackles. Pema and Williams are young players, but Marcus Trufant might have the biggest job in this game. They will put number 45 Trufant on number one Reggie Williams and pick it going to Charles Frederick. He breaks free and gets the first down. Rams, they have so many weapons. Cody Pickett has five players with 30 or more catches this year, including Mr. Frederick, who just caught his 37. Well, Steve, and this is what having a player of Reggie Williams caliber does for you. Williams comes in 77 catches over 1,200 yards. That means you got to give him attention, and that means the other guys can step up. And like you said, Reddick, Kevin Ware, Charles Frederick, Paul Arnold, all these guys are 35 plus catches. Now Rich Alexis for about four yards, but how about Mr. Williams' game last week and their sensational upset at Oregon? He had 14 catches for 198 yards and three touchdowns. Well, and it was just, just <laughs> that's just domination. When you have a player of Reggie Williams' caliber catching that many balls, and you see the numbers that you just mentioned last week against the Oregon Ducks. And, you know, again, that's not an easy place to play. Autzen's not easy. Martin Stadium's not easy. It's loud. Just great focus. Second down. Huskies need six. And somebody jumped. Looked like it might have been Ryan Long, the left defensive tackle. There's Ryan, 6'6", 287, a redshirt junior. This is his third year starting, and there are many people who think he's the best defensive pe tackle in the conference. For the snap, offside defense. That's a five-yard penalty. Gordon Reese, our lead referee. And, and Steve, you said it about Ryan Long. Here's a guy who, we, as we go through the Pac-10 and talk to coaches like Dirk Cutter at Arizona State and, and Pete Carroll, they didn't know how good Ryan Long really is. And I'll tell you, this is a guy who's a powerful man, shot put champ, coming out of high school, a basketball player. I mean, really a well-rounded athlete. Second down and one. Alexis dotting the eye. Alexis, first down and more. Rich Alexis to midfield. And Alexis over 600 yards rushing now this season. Carl Pema knocked him out of bounds. And Steve, we're talking Ryan Long. He's going to be right here. They double team him, okay? They seal, and then the back just reads it. He just rolls it back. Really, it's just kind of a design that way you have a point of emphasis in that offensive line they double up on number 88 and then Rich Alexis busts through the line and picks up a nice game and now on first down Cody Pickett will spread them all out no backs Tom Pickett now he'll have to scramble 
Good job by the defensive secondary, but Cody picks up at least five, six, maybe seven yards. Steve, what you do, what you get when you spread out in five wides, someone has to make a declaration. And, and what ends up happening right here, Cody Pickett, remember you have five options, right? But you have the sixth option of running. Right there, Cody Pickett, genius in his decision. But what it allows Keith Gilbertson, the offensive coordinator, and Steve Axman is, okay, hey, this is how they're matching up with us. We can come back to our five wide package. I expect them to run option here shortly. Well, look what he has done the last few seasons. And now on second and three, they'll run Alexis and Rich hammering his way. He will come up about a yard shy of a first down, third and one for the Huskies. Okay, so the key today will be conversions of third downs. And right now, Washington comes in almost at about a 48% clip on third down, which is about 10 percentage points better than anyone else in the conference. So they're working it on third down, but you know what? It's going that short field, right? That's what you have to do. You look at what they've done in the first seven games, the last four games, not quite the number they're looking for, but they've dominated in time of possession. Williams out of the game now. They'll be running. Frederick single coverage in the right side. And they do run Alexis, and he is met right at that line of scrimmage. And the defense holds. Mauli Davis, the middle linebacker. Well, if you're going to send the message, now's the time to send the message. Rick Newhouse is not afraid to go for it on fourth down. You look at it right here. There look, appears to be a big hole, right? And Mauli Davis just shuts the door. And he's not a big guy at 5'10", 230, playing middle linebacker. You know, he is a big guy. I was talking to him before the game. He, he's not real tall, but he is thick. Washington leads the Pac-10 with 12 fourth down conversions this year. The Huskies were three for three last week against Oregon. Blitz on. They'll run Alexis. Nothing doing. Oh, what a surge by Long and Shavies. Steve, he stacks it up right here, but watch Davis right here. He's going to come in too over the top. Oh, and number 27 gets a nice plug as well. Eric Coleman, the free safety. Oh, what a what a play! Washington State, the top offense of the Pac-10, will have it when we come back. Washington State doing a great job on fourth down. Mauli Davis and his defense held. Cougars football. Boy, you turn up the heat on the first drive. Love it. Now it's Jason Gessertan, the 6 1 senior from Honolulu. Backs up and fires, and it is intercepted. A big play by Washington's Owen Biddle. And Gesser, who was 24 touchdowns to eight interceptions, gets his first pick in the big game of the Apple Cup. Steve, this is one of those errant throws that you wish you could have back. I watched Gesser in pregame warm-up. He threw some high balls, but he has such a great release, quick release. They're trying to get, they have the over-under here. They're trying to get the deep ball here to Mike Bush, who's 6'6". Well, guess what? He overthrows Mike Bush. And Owen Biddle, who's been a role player to some extent this year for the Husky Steve, comes up with a dynamic play and a big interception there. Hey, Biddle, Biddle. The dogs in the middle making pickoffs early. And that is eight interceptions for the last three games. Here goes Alexis on the screen. And Alexis rumbling for the first down to the 30-yard line. Yeah, eight interceptions, nine turnovers overall achieved by that Husky defense. And, you know, that's one thing Jason Gesser's been so good at this year. He hasn't thrown it to the other team. Came in 24 TDs, only eight interceptions. 
2,600, almost 2,700 yards. And again, Steve, turnovers equate to short field opportunities. That's the difference in big games. Look at what happened today. Michigan, Ohio State, Wolverines driving. The fumble by John Navarre. Ohio State would hold on to win that game, and they likely are going to play in the Fiesta Bowl in the national championship game. Washington State hopes to join them, but Miami must lose. And now Zach Tuiasosopo for a first down inside the 15-yard line. Steve, again, it's what you have to do when you have all these weapons. You got Reggie Williams, you got Paul Arnold, Charles Frederick. Don't forget about the fullback. Right there, Zach Tuiasosopo one-hands it, brings it down, then watch him, converted linebacker. You tell me this guy isn't bringing the business. His brother Marcus Man. was the starting quarterback the last time the Huskies were here and thrashed the Cougars 51 to 3. There's 51 to 3. They're from Woodenville, Washington. Both Zach and Marcus were outstanding baseball players as well. Down, first down, picket throws, and the catch is made. Reggie Williams stretching. He comes up a yard shy, but it's first and goal. You know, I think that's a touchdown. Anytime the ball crosses the plane, that, that's a touchdown. Well, how, how don't you call that? Help me with this. Watch his little look in right here. Look at his strength. This tackle. Watch this. Where, where does he end? Is it? If this is a Super Bowl, give it to him. Come on. Oh, you're remembering the Rams game, yes, huh? Yes, you bet. Oh no, he didn't get it. You're right. He didn't. Boy, Upon you know what? Look at the view. That's Rams right. is wrong. <laughs> Okay, I'm wrong. I'll be wrong <laughs> once this year. Okay. No, that's just two. You got me. Pick it. Keeper. He stops shy. What a hit by Will Durding. Fizz, how good is that play by Will Durding? Now we know we do the Huskies are going to run option, right? Neutralizes the corner. They put a lot of guys on the edge. And watch Will Dirty scrape. And then someone came up. Oh, again, Eric Coleman was the one that sent Cody Pickett flying in the air. Oh. Alexis slams, hammers, leans. Did he get in? He didn't get in. It is third and goal. How about this stamp? Well, they held him on fourth down at the 38 yard line can they do it again I mean that's Jeremy Williams Ryan Long Shavies and Isaac Brown Hamron now Williams will come out and I bet they go with Tomasi Kangaika who's the 300 pound senior from Anchorage Alaska Kangaika is low to the ground Steve six foot six one but he's got that head of hair that Mike Levenseller the offensive coordinator just likes to rub his hands in for good luck They'll need it here. There's the hair. And you can see how big he is over that center. Quarterback sneak. Pickett drives. They give it to him. A touchdown for Washington. Anytime you spot a team, an early seven, Steve, could be a lot of trouble. We come to you from Martin Stadium in Pullman, Washington, where the Huskies have just taken a 6 nothing lead on the number three team in the nation, the Washington State Cougars. The Cougars needing a victory to clinch a Rose Bowl spot. The point after touchdown by John Anderson is good, and it is the Huskies 7, the Cougars nothing.
Cody Pickett on a quarterback sneak gives Washington a 7 nothing lead. It was set up by the Owen Biddle interception and then Pickett took him 41 yards for the touchdown. Twice they were stopped at the goal line but on third down and goal Pickett dove in for the touchdown. Now to kick off the Huskies John Anderson to Sammy Moore Jerome Riley and Jonathan Smith. It'll be down in the end zone for a Kiyosara game break. Let's check in with Chris Rose. All right, Steve, the Cougars trying to get to the Rose Bowl. USC dismantling UCLA in Pasadena today. Kerry Colbert off a little trickery. Carson Palmer, four TD tosses. And now the Trojans will turn on Fox Sports Net, and they will be rooting desperately for the Washington Huskies to continue the upset. Yes, they do, Chris, and that is 28 touchdowns now for Carr Opinion. He's probably the most talented quarterback in college football. Throw the Bruins a life preserver, would you? <laughs> well, how about the Trojans, how well they're playing? They might be the best team in the country. And I'm serious, they've had two losses this year to Kansas State and here to Washington State, but they might be playing the best in the country. Here's our Kiyosara offense. Jason Gesser, the 6'1 senior from Honolulu, 24 touchdowns to nine interceptions as he was picked off earlier. His backs and receivers, these guys, Green, Darling, Riley, and Bush have combined for 27 touchdowns. And the offensive line, very good. Derek Roach is a man who's a four-year starter before every game. He watches the movie Rocky IV to get him fired up. There's a hammer in the middle, and it is Jermaine Green. And Green leaning forward very close to a first down. Steve, one of the things as we look at the defense for and Washington, Kai Ellis, Manasi Hapoy, Terry Johnson, all those guys got to play great up front today. And so does Ben Madavi, who's a former walk on, who is now the captain. Jafar Williams, Marquise Cooper playing super of late. And the defensive backs look for Nate Robinson to be tested. He is a true freshman from Seattle. Derek Johnson playing great ball, had two picks last week against Oregon. Gets her to the middle. Gets the first down by Jermaine Green. Green had his best game in his young career with 180 yards in the Oregon game. And there's Jason Gesser. You said he made the mistake of the interception. But Jason has said many times, sometimes I have more competitive spirit than common sense. <laughs> you know what, though? That's okay. You're right. That's all right. As long as you get the W at the end of the night, and he's 19 and three the last two years. That's tough to argue with. That is tough to argue with. Now, now the WSU career records with 8,100 yards and all those TDs. The guys he's passing, literally. Manasi Hopoy on the tackle. Drew Bledsoe, Ryan Lee, but they're throwing Samoa, Jack Thompson. I mean, when you look at all those numbers that he's just kind of racing by, it's staggering. Jack Thompson is here today. They run the reverse, not much there. And then a hole opens up for Jerome Riley, and he gets the first down to midfield. 20 yards in the dash when the defense should have had him for a three-yard loss. Jerome Riley, Steve, and you said it earlier, the three impact players are the wideouts for Washington State. They spread the field. They they just have so much athleticism. You see Riley kind of double clutch that one would be tackler there. And Jerome Riley, 6'2", 185 senior, Arlita, California. Again, it's the players that Mike Price gets into the program. They're, they're just great athletes and awfully fast. And they'll spread them out again, throw out of the shotgun. And incomplete, they say. It was trapped. Oh, that was close. That was close. Troy Benneman, true freshman, tight end. It's an awfully nice effort. See if he comes down with it. Watch, he lays out. Boy, is that just threaded? It looks like he caught the ball. Well, we couldn't see it. The field judge. Oh, field judge said no. This will be the true test here. I, Steve, I, I think he had his arm underneath. But I could be wrong twice in the same game, could I? <laughs> Not a chance. <laughs> Second and ten. Jonathan Smith. Not much there. And knocking him down was Manasseh Hopoy, who has made his presence felt. The number 56, the sophomore from Sacramento Valley High School. This is a very young Washington team. I think that's what a lot of people have forgotten. 
yep. when they have got only six and five this year, and that's just not enough, they say, in Seattle. But only nine of the 46 players in the Husky 2 deep are seniors, and they're growing up together. Yeah, Steve, they are. Both sides. Washington State's young, and, and UW is young. Both of them are young. Washington, though, not used to finishing in the middle of the Pac-10. We will have a penalty here. How about this? Here's what Rick Neuheisel has done. The Huskies have been first or second in the conference 18 of the last 25 years, and Neuheisel has finished only first or second in his time. Last time he came to Pullman, they won the conference crown. They went to the Rose Bowl, and just two years later, even though they won eight games last year with a young team, he's taken some criticism despite six wins. Well, look at the market they play in. Who else takes criticism? Bob Toledo at UCLA, and you, you live in the big market. Pete Carroll last year took criticism. Uh, Rick Neuheisel is going to take criticism being in Seattle. Well, let's talk to Rick Neuheisel about playing through adversity. Adversity happens to everybody, whether it be in football or in life, and not so much how you got into it, but how you respond to it says more about a person, and I'm very proud about the way the kids have dealt with this adversity. We've been underdogs each of the last two weeks. We'll be underdogs, huge underdogs again today. And uh, we don't give a damn. We're going to keep playing. Steve, those kinds of numbers you see putting up right there, what the Huskies have done, they've always been up at the top. But as Rick Neuheisel said, as in football, as in life, you're going to fight adversity. It's how you respond. You know my mantra now, it's, it's all good, right? But you know what, you gotta fight through the adversity because lo and behold, you, you have so many momentum shifts in the, during the course of a football game. It's, it's uncanny, you kinda sit there and go, oh man, we didn't get the bounce again. You're not a football coach, so of no. course your mantra would be a puna matata, no worries. <laughs> right. If you're a football coach, you're always getting looked at through a microscope. Third and 10, Jason Gesser. Screen, nicely set up, Jonathan Smith, first down. Out of bounds at the 27-yard line. Knocked out by Kai Ellis. Hey, Steve, you know, a late flag, late flag. Mike Price there, and, you know, take a look. They set it up. They run all their guys off, and they're going to screen over here, and they just get some nice blocks set up. Mike Levenseller, though, Steve, you said it, a football coach lives and dies by this, right? That's a great call on third down. Appears to be a face mask at the end of the play, but Mike Levenseller, he told me this morning as we're working out, I'll tag this right after Gordon Reese lets us know the call. Personal foul, grabbing the face mask on the defense, half the distance to the goal from the end of the run, first down. So on Mike Price's staff, Mike Levenseller right here had the duty of, on, he was on the speaking circuit this week, week in the greater state of Washington, and they were working out. He's out of his and, mind, he's not wearing a jacket. Well, he never wears a jacket. But Steve, he said, you know something, you know what I lead with Rams on, a, on when I go speak? He goes, I tell him, I'm not a house builder, I'm not a plumber, I'm not a carpenter, I, I, I'm not a mechanic, but I am a football coach and I have passion to be good at what I want to do and I spend you know 80 hours a week doing it and he says they never the critics never come up the bad questions never come up they love the Cougars the last two years 10 game winners last year and they came into this football game with nine victories and only one loss unbeaten in conference play a flag is down here the Cougars continue their quest it is motion in the backfield so five yards but the Cougars continue their quest for their best season ever. The previous best was the 97 team with Ryan Leaf that went 10 and 2 as the Cougars went to their first Rose Bowl in 67 Illegal years led by that man. Offense, that penalty is refused. It will be second down. Steve, Mike Price, you know, he does such a great job coaching football, number one, but also building a team and continuity and resiliency and developing leaders, not only the players, but on his staff as well. It's a classic example of nice guys do finish first. Yes, sir. They will run John Tippins. This is their tough back. John Tippins going 6'1", 220. He's their slasher, a senior from Santa Monica. 
over 400 yards rushing this year. They've got three running backs. Green with 661, Tippins with 441 coming in, and Jonathan Smith with 237. You combine them, you've got a 1,400-yard running back. You got a lot. You got a lot of yards there, Steve. Third and eight. Here's what Mike Price's staff is so good at. It's it's a collection. It's a mind share. Mike Price, Aaron Price, quarterback coach, Levin Seller, the offensive coordinator, in title, but. They rely on each other to get to the right play. And right now, red zone opportunity, so important, especially now. You might even, I just got to say, you got to find that guy number one, Darling. Brevar Darling, and again, that clock winding down. A penalty flag will be tossed. Two five-yard markers against the Cougars on this drive. Shoot themselves in the foot a little bit. Before the snap, full start, offense, offense, five yards from the previous spot, still third down. This is what Mike Price was saying last year in the game out in Seattle. They came in, they were favored, they were too tight. He said, we were just too tight. And so this week it's been, hey, let's have fun. Let's relax, let's make the plays. Let's not go overboard, be composed, right? Lead. And it's third and 13. Washington State rushes four. Gasser flips. End zone over the head of Darling. It was six because he had Nate Robinson, the freshman, beaten badly. Adam. Adam. Ed, Ed, their best player on a young freshman, Nate Robinson. Now, granted, number 13, Nate, has been playing great. He's just flat out beat that time. Jason Gesser. Couldn't deliver the ball, Steve. He's been high a few times tonight. He's been high, and DeVar Darling, 6'3", 205, probably their best receiver, and boy, they had an opportunity there. So Drew Dunning comes on to try one from 34. He hits it dead, solid, perfect. Cougars on the board. It's the Huskies 7, Washington State 3. I love this sign. Look, one's a Cougar, one's a Husky. Friendship supper in November. You know, this has been a great rivalry, and there's Jason Gesser, who just missed hitting DeVar Darling in the left corner. The result was three points for Washington State instead of the seven he wanted. Now, Gesser will talk with his offensive coaches upstairs. And you watch Adam Holiday kick off to this man, number 10, Charles Frederick, and number 13, Nate Robinson. Both can fly. Frederick has returned a kickoff for a touchdown in his career. Holiday on his first kickoff, Steve drove it about 10 yards to the back of the end zone. Holiday hammers it again. Take a knee. For a Kiyosara game break, let's check in with Chris Rose. All right, guys, is there a hotter player in the country than Penn State's Larry Johnson? With this gallop, he becomes the ninth different player to rush for more than 2,000 yards in a single season. Five of the previous eight have won the Heisman. Does he get your vote? Larry Johnson's a man. That, that uh, unquestionably, he's a man. Justin Palmer has over 3,000 yards passing with a game to go against Notre Dame. And what is he now, like 28 oh, you got, eight touchdowns and interceptions? You got it. He has played late, late. You got to keep Ken Dorsey in the mix, too. All he does is win. And here's a guy who might be the leading Heisman Trophy candidate for next year in Cody Pickett. He's going to go over a 4,000 yeah. yards passing as a junior, and he says he wants to come back to play his senior year with the Huskies. Paul Arnold on the first down catch. Well, that's how you win a national championship. And, and you know, and the accolades and the trophies come as a result of winning a lot of games. And, and Cody Pickett's one of many great quarterbacks in the Pac-10. Carson Palmer, you mentioned him. Jason Gesser, Andrew Walter at Arizona State. Pickett six for six to start this game. Now runs Alexis. Rich with a big hole and hammers his way for eight yards. Let's go to Rich Waltz. 
Guys, everybody knows that Reggie Williams is number one because Washington State has practiced against that all week long. But don't be surprised if he's wearing number 19 soon and not on offense, on defense. The Huskies have needed help in the secondary, and Rick Neuheisel has planned to use Reggie Williams in this game, but he has to wear number 19 because on defense, there already is a number one, Jafar Williams. So if you see Reggie Williams wearing 19, he's on defense. That's not too confusing. Two number ones, both Williams. You better switch one to number 19. And here goes Alexis firing for the first down and hammering past Eric Coleman. Well, and, and by rule, you could never have duplicate numbers on the same side uh, on the field at the same time. So that that's the other reason that you can't have that. But look at the hole right there. Oh, that's a good hit. Eric Coleman, number 27, has come up, Steve. And of course, he, he ended up taking the place of Lamont Thompson, great Washington State free safety in the past. But Eric Coleman has stepped up and delivered. I mean, and he's delivered hits today. He's had three big hits. Near midfield, Pickett fires right. Alexis, for about another five, six yards. Will Dirting on the tackle. Second down and three. Alexis gets about two. He'll still need another yard for the first down, but Rich is finally healthy, Rams, and I think once he got past that high ankle sprain, Rich has been firing to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, they've been able to run, run the ball the last couple weeks at 30 rushes for 122 yards last week against the Oregon Ducks. And, you know, Oregon, as we know, Nick Aliotti, our good friend and defensive coordinator for the Oregon Ducks, He'll, he'll stack the box to stop the run because if you can stop the run, and same with Bill Dover here with Washington State, you gotta stop the run. And you gotta, gotta hold teams on third down. That's the big key. They stopped him again, almost the same spot they stopped him last time, only this time on third down, but there is a flag thrown and it was very late. It was late. Steve, and it might go against Washington State. D.D. Achilanu might have been the guilty culprit. He and Kevin Ware, the tight end, kind of locked up and started sparring. Talking to sparring, you know, Larry Johnson at Penn State. Now that guy, he's a serious, like, hands, quick hands guy. Like, he thumps his teammates. Used to. Two dead ball, personal fouls. Offense. And defense. Those penalties offset each other. There you go. It'll be fourth down. Gordon, why throw the flag? <laughs> I know, I know. They had to. Yeah, see? Uh, Rob, so Rob Akey. Get us golden. Rob Akey over there. One of Mike Price's valuable assistant coaches. He's in charge of that defensive line. Chris Ball in charge of the defensive backs. And Mike Walker with the D-line. With Bill Dova doing the coordinating. So on fourth down, it's time to punt. Washington might take that five-yard penalty, hoping that the Cougars are a little too eager again. Nope, they'll punt. Now they'll fake it and throw, and it is incomplete. Intended for Wilbur Hooks. He had it in his hand, but just could not hold on. Boy, you'd never think the punter, Derek McLaughlin, was going to throw a, a bullet but he does, and he leads Wilbur Hooks coming out of his break. It appears as though he caught it, and then it just slipped out of his hands at the last moment. I mean, he steps up and really steps into this ball. He really led him coming out of his break, and look at that. Wow. Incomplete. So a big play that could have been huge for Washington. Now gives the Cougars great field position, and Gesser wants to look and throw right, and does. And it is caught by Jerome Riley, who escapes and leans forward, gains nine, and then he is thumped by Owen Biddle. Steve, I, I'm just solely amazed at how Washington State is able to spread the field. They, one, they just line up. I mean, you'll see on the next play where they line up. One, one, one player, player is going to line up out here outside the numbers. The other one's going to line up here outside the numbers. And they just put so much pressure on a defense when you line up outside the numbers. When we talked to Mike Levenseller and Mike Price yesterday, we asked them about double wide, and they said double wide is not the way to attack them. And I 
I want to ask you why after Jermaine Green is stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. Why well, is double wide not right, the right way? And, and double wide is essentially two by two. So you, you, you show them a balanced offense. They want to go three by one. Three wide outs to one side, one wide out on the back side. That's three by one. Three by one can also be achieved in a in an attached formation with a tight end on the line of scrimmage and two wides outside of him. Now, again, that's a three by one. You'll have a split end on the back side, and they just put all that pressure on the defense. Well, we'll see how Washington State spreads them out as we begin the second quarter, right after you hear this. Washington with a 7-3 lead over Washington State. It is third down and three for the Cougars. Let's see how they spread them. It'll be two to the left, one to the right. Now they'll send a man in motion, Jerome Riley, right then back left. Yes, sir, looking. Now he'll scramble. He'll run for the first down and more. And then he is hammered from the backside by Anthony Kelly, who, like his number, hit him like an AK-47. Steve, but that's that's the element of surprise Jason Gesser delivers is he can run so well with the football. Look how quick he is. But he does take a hammer from Anthony Kelly on right there. Ouch. Oh man. Welcome. Welcome to the uh, speed of college football. But Jason Gesser's been here in college football for quite some time. Is he something else? He takes so much punishment and just keeps on the ticket. Remember, he broke his ribs in a game against Montana State earlier this year and played the very next week. Jermaine Green running to the outside, running to the 30. Owen Biddle on the tackle with help from Nate Robinson. There is Ben Madavi. He is their captain. Let's check out our FedEx ground and air stats. 41 and 42 for the two teams, but Washington with that terrific drive for the touchdown, and that's why they're passing so well in a total of 115. Second and three for Jason Gesser. Blitz from the left side over the middle. It's Bienemann with the catch and a first down at the 11. Rams, they brought the corner from the left side. Bienemann got wide open. And Steve Bienemann's at tight end. We're talking about that three by one. He lines up attached. What a great play right there. He was able to split the defenders. Jason Gesser got in the ball on time. That's the most important thing. The ball came out of his hand. Bang. He's got a catch and he's running down the field. Man, that's a good play. Two receptions for Bienemann only had seven coming into this game. Yes, are changing up the plays at the line of scrimmage. He looks right, scrambles, flips, end zone. Bush incomplete. He was held. Man, I, I Jason Gesser is cat quick. You know who he reminds me of is Ty Detmer, the old BYU quarterback. Ty was so good in the pocket at buying time and sliding and moving. And then when you got to deliver the ball, his feet are not in where they should be. His feet are not set sometimes, and yet he can flick. Steve, he can flick it, and it comes out of his hand. Here's Mike Bush. Watch him. Oh, that, yeah, that's a hold. <laughs> that's a subtle hold, though, I would call it. Subtle. Pass interference. Defense. Sits a pass. Interference occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball will be put on the two-yard line. Automatic first down. We are at Martin Stadium and Pullman, Washington, a sold-out Martin Stadium for Washington and Washington State, the number three team in the nation. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, and Rich Waltz on the sideline. 
It is the Cougars with a first and goal at the two. They'll run it. Jermaine Green, touchdown! Steve, what set it all up, it was just really just kind of a lead. The fullback lays out his guy. Nice block out front. And then Jermaine Green pretty much able to walk in the end zone. But again, right at the, right on the edge. Josh Paris, number 50 left tackle, just dominated his man. And the point after touchdown is good, and another flag is thrown. We will see a lot of yellow hankies during rivalry week. So many of these young players played against each other or with each other in high schools, most of them from the state of Washington. Yeah, there's some California kids too. Well, it's like uh, Mike Price says, you know, our heart and souls from the state of Washington, but our arms and legs are from California. <laughs> <laughs> and Hawaii. Like Jason Gesser. So Washington State has their very first lead of the night. It is 10-7 on Jermaine Green's two-yard run. Seven yards in the scoring drive. You know, it's it's uh, it's interesting. I, I saw Hugh Millen, the ex-Washington Husky, great quarterback, and also ex-Patriot. And I said, "Hey, Hugh, how are you, man?" He goes, "Good." I said, "You doing a little pre-post game show over radio?" Yeah, yeah. I said, "Go Pats." <laughs> As Tom Love Ramsey this, huh? also played yeah. for the New England Patriots. I fooled him for a while. He's got his cat hat on. Yeah. Hey, Bledsoe, we're all alumni now. You know, Bledsoe now. Uh, but current Buffalo Bill. Well, Ramps surely remembers 1982 when Washington State knocked Washington out of the Rose Bowl with a 24-20 win. Yeah. And Tom's UCLA Bruins, who had lost to Washington 10 to 7 two weeks before, went to Pasadena instead. Yeah. The next season, the same thing happened. Yeah, that's why you, you know you can never discount these rivalry games. It is you never know what can happen. Man. We've got another one this Friday in Arizona and Arizona State and again on Saturday Oklahoma Oklahoma State well, here we yeah. go first and ten for the Huskies and Cody Pickett started hot now he'll run the football and getting to the 22 23 yard line it's time for our Lycos trivia question Washington leads its series against Washington State. You see the numbers. Which teams lead the other four Pac-10 rivalry series? We'll give you the answer later in the ball game. Hmm. Can you say his name? Yes, I can. Tui. <laughs> he is the first eight-syllable player ever to play for the Huskies. He did it well. Uh, I think I messed up. <laughs> no one will notice except mom and dad. And here's a first down throw by Cody Pickett to Patrick Reddick. So many weapons on these Huskies, but mainly from the wideouts. I still don't think their offensive line is as good as it will be next year. Probably pretty accurate. You know, they're they're still young, and with a senior quarterback coming back, Steve, they'll be, they'll be that much better. You see the numbers on Patrick Reddick. 42 catches 463 but when you have that senior at quarterback he can direct the line many times and get to the right protection because you're changing plays and protection at the line of, line of scrimmage many times blitz on flag thrown they will get through and Pickett will give it to his running back but I believe the left defensive end was in the neutral zone yeah Mauli Davis was also blitzing I like Mauli he you know he, he's a product at a Oakland Skyline High School and I asked him I said hey who do you want me to say hi to and he goes well actually my my mom's up at the game so I said oh that's kind of cool 
But how many great players have come out of Oakland Skyline? And then he, he of course, was on a full ride to New Mexico Outside. State. Defense, five yards, previous spot. Still first down. He took a full ride to New Mexico State, and then he ended up transferring out to Washington State. What was interesting, though, is Bill Dober, the defensive coordinator yesterday, they didn't realize how good he was. They never knew that he was the guy they were looking for the whole time, and he was on the roster. They went after, they went and got Kevin Sperry, and they got Donnie Jackson, a couple great players, by the way. But Davis is the guy who rose to the top. Pickett. That was a free one. Washington State showing blitz. Now Mauli Davis says everybody drop back. They're expecting a throw. And Davis making all the calls on defense. Pickett will throw to the right. And it's Charles Frederick first down. Steve, that right there, that play typifies what a rivalry game is all about. You have Pickett come up the line of scrimmage. He's checking. You have Mauli Davis checking their defense. All of a sudden, pump fake. Up the sideline, 22-yard gain, just a bullet throw by pick at that time to Charles Frederick. And, and this guy is so dangerous. Boy, Charles Frederick's one of those guys. He can return punts and kicks, and he's all over the field. I'll tell you, Pickett's got it going. Yep. Nine for nine in this game, 106 yards. And he has also run for a touchdown. He's looking deep. And that's his first incompletion. He threw it away when Kevin Ware was covered. And, and Steve, one of, one of the things that really amazed me, and you know I love looking at all these numbers and, and statistics, but Washington has two guys, Charles Frederick and Reggie Williams, both over 110 yards per game in total offense, and then Rich Alexis is at 91 yards. When you look at most teams, they end up, they end up becoming so dangerous when they have these multi-purpose players. So that's what's amazing. Well, here goes Cody on second and ten. Washington State blitzing seven, and it is almost intercepted. Will Durding, the red shirt freshman. You know, they try to get that little quick dump over the middle. Again, blitz read. Middle linebacker comes, what happens? Vacate the middle, and uh, boy, that's a great play by Will Dirty. Sticking his hand in there, knocking the ball away. Now Dirty goes to the sideline as they bring on a nickel defensive back. Crowd picks up. Frederick, motion left. Pick it with time, over the middle. Frederick short of the first down by about three. Pick it again, Steve. He gets rid of the ball so quick. Bang, he hits that fifth step. Ball's out. Okay, nice, safe, underneath throw. But that's just good defense. Shutting him down. But he came up three yards shy of a yep. down. so on comes John Anderson to try and tie it from 50 yards out. He has hit 60 field goals in his career from 50 or beyond. He hammers this one up. Distance good, but it's off left. Time out on the field, 11.03 to play. First half, Cougars 10, Huskies 7. Butch hugging every single Cougar fan that he can find right now. Washington State, the number three team in the nation with a 10-7 lead. Mike Price is surrounded by his offense. And there's Mike right in the middle. Looks like yep. they're going to come out with Colin Henderson. Here's the BCS top 10. Miami almost chalked by Pittsburgh on Thursday. Ohio State got the win they needed, and they're going to the Fiesta Bowl. Washington State right now leading Washington. You see what Oklahoma's doing with Texas Tech. They're shutting out Cliff Kingsbury. Notre Dame got Rutgers, but Notre Dame has to go to USC next week, and that will be tough at the Coliseum. That, that will be a challenge. Ooh. Notre Dame and SC. SC, as you said earlier, Steve, playing so well right now. Really, really clicking on all cylinders. Look at Gesser. Look at the umpire. He looked like he was dancing out there doing the spins. Walt, Walt Wolf, the umpire, just got knocked on his 
tail. And look at Gesser. See how quick he moves there, Steve. And then, of course, just he's lit up at the end. Kai Ellis, number 90. They call him the freak. And he is the freak daddy. I'll tell you what, that guy, he is ripped. Terry Johnson with number 99. He was the one that put the pressure on originally. Kai Ellis came and cleaned him up. But those are the two guys. Tim Huntley, the defensive coordinator, said he had to have a great game tonight. Gesser changes the play. Blitz is on. Gesser going deep. The catch is made by Sammy Moore, and he will go the distance. 67 yards. And they went after the Huskies' best corner, Steve. Derek, Derek Johnson. How about that audible by Jason Gesser? Jason Gesser, I mean, watch up top. They end up, they fight for position. They fight for position. And Derek Johnson gets in that trail position, and I'm sure he was expecting, based on what they had seen, I'm sure in terms of route reading for, through film study, expecting him to sit out and make a break. Gunning blasted through the Cougars. The top offense in the Pac-10 have opened up the lead. When we return, Chris Rose will have a preview of our Nissan Halftime Report. And Washington State would love to go to the Rose Bowl, but you know what, Tom? They wouldn't mind eating some Tostitos at the Fiesta Bowl either. Steve, you never know. It might happen because all of a sudden you got Ohio State. They, they had a scare today with Michigan. Miami, scare the other night. And they have to go to Syracuse. Always tough to win there. Boy, the dome can get rocking and it can get loud. And right now, th their games have been so close. You never know. Washington State with a win tonight. They're taking care of their side of the business, and that's what you have to do. Frederick to one knee. Well, here we are in Pullman and the Cougars with a 10-point lead. Washington, this is a big game. A win would guarantee a bowl trip and a 26th straight 500 or better season. And Steve, here they go checking off again. Reggie Williams up top near the 20, up top at the screen. Reddick. Can't hold on. Hey, let's go back to a great Apple Cup game in 1997. Ryan Leaf was the quarterback. He threw to Chris Jackson for the touchdown. But the freshman, Lamont Thompson, was equally as tough in that game. Jackson with the score, but this is one of three interceptions by Lamont Thompson. Mike Price, you think he was happy? So was Ryan Leaf. 41 35. Cougars won that Apple Cup and went to the Rose Bowl. They would lose to the Michigan Wolverines 21 16 with great memories and they're going back to the Rose if they can win one of the next two games against the Huskies or at UCLA. Let's go back to our Lycos trivia question Washington leading the series which teams though lead the other four Pac-10 rivalry series USC leads UCLA Stanford in the big game Oregon over Oregon State. We've got Arizona and Arizona State on Fox Sports Net on Friday. The finals today, Cal, as expected, trashed Stanford. Oregon State over Oregon. Boy, wow. without Ontario Smith, what's wow. happened to the Ducks? You know, they just haven't had the potency on offense. You know, they, they got exposed just a little bit. Ontario Smith was able to keep them in a lot of ball games. They gave up 42 straight points to Washington last week. Now pick it to the air. Trying for Reggie Williams, incomplete, second and ten. But, but Cody Pickett was right on the mark, Steve. You, you know, he hasn't missed too many balls tonight, and he has been literally on the money. The last two throws, the one that came out right before the trivia answer to Frederick again, right on the money. And then that went up the sideline to Williams. He, Williams had a chance at it. I Cody. think. 
I, I think right now you got to get Reggie Williams in your offense. He's got to be a big part. Here right now he's down at this part of the screen. Even though they're going to play Marcus Trufant number 45 against him, you got you got to start levering him. him. They try to go to Reggie over the middle, but in comes the safety, and he makes the play. Eric Coleman. After going nine for nine, he has just completed two of his last seven passes as Bill Dova's defense has tightened the screws. Well, watch. Coleman's right here. He's looking inside for Reg Reggie Williams. Again, pattern read by the defense. They know Williams is going to come underneath. Coleman's responsibility, he was a free, a true free safety unless number one comes down inside. Now, all of a sudden, you're playing hoop, and you pass him off to the next guy. And Coleman made a great play. Third and ten. Pickett is devoured by Ryan Long. His 13th sack this year. All right, you want a great story, Steve? You, you mentioned Ryan Long earlier, okay? Rob Akey, the defensive line coach. He works along with big Mike Walker, a former Cougar himself, and I'll get to this in a moment. Laughlin with the punt and hits it away from Trufant. That is a fine kick because Trufant didn't have a chance to return it. You know Lou <laughs> Olson's a good coach. <laughs> Enough said there because they are a great team this season. Hey. Jerome Riley on the reverse, oh. and he's got a sideline to himself. Riley pass midfield. Finally knocked down at the 32. 35 yards on the reverse. Wow. Wow. How good it is, is Riley? Riley's phenomenal, but watch, they got it set up, and everyone pursues to the ball. Washington State look who's out in front number 17 Jason Gesser and he gets blocked <laughs> he gets pushed by Riley he gets a block on Chris Massey Chris Massey ends up finally making the, the tackle but look look at Gesser he dropped his head though Steve boy I got to get him out just well you got to keep your head up well Riley pushed him into him <laughs> he said if you're going to block from me stay in front of me look at that they like he's Gesser. exhausted yeah. You know when he became the leader they said he became the leader as a freshman against Hawaii they're in Hawaii and Hawaii is unhappy because he left the islands yeah. to go to that's right the, the, the mainland, mainland. Yeah. and play football they're twisting his knee and he was jumping up and yelling at the opponents and they said that's when they knew that they, they had to name him captain as a sophomore the first sophomore captain to play for Mike Price. Yeah, it's it's impressive. I'll tell you it. Uh, he's done a great job. Remarkable job leading the team. He said Mike Price said he's a little like Jake Plummer. He just has the ability to get it done. And he said I don't care how he gets it done. He just gets it done. He wins. Le leadership is so important in, in any sport but football especially. And you know that's one of the things I asked Rick Nuance. I mean who has emerged as a leader on defense and really. He didn't answer it. I mean, Madavi is kind of the, the leader because he's the middle linebacker and, and calling some of the signals, but they haven't had a leader emerge. Gesser is sacked back at the 40 yard line. That is the third sack by the Huskies, and this time it's Terry Johnson. And I like Terry Johnson. You talk about a guy who, you, you know, has really improved over the course of the season. Steve, Terry Johnson lines up at that inside defensive tackle, but look at him. I mean, he, he's just fighting his way through. He had fought through two guys. Came through the center. Then he came through John Tippins, a fullback. Tippins gave him a, threw him a wing. Got knocked on his. Good athlete. Ear. Yeah. Play the offensive side as yes, well. Yes, he did. Good hands. That's right. Tight end. Cougars three of four on third downs, but this is a big one on third and 17. Blitz on. Gesser being chased. He throws it away. He was outside the box. Manassi. So it'll be fourth down and 17. Manasi Hopoy on the charge. Yeah, his teammates call him Manas. Manas Hopoy comes and watch him run. Gesser didn't think Hopoy was this fast. Hopoy got just lumbering after him. That's a big man, too, now. Hopoy, 6'4, about 290 pounder. So 
So Kyle Basler comes on for the punt. Frederick standing at the 10. Anything behind him, he'll let go. It bounces at the 10. Cougars will stop it at the eight yard line. A wonderful punt by Basler. It's a cool, crisp evening tonight in Pullman, but earlier today, you can see where Pullman is showing. About Tom. right here, right there. There's Martin Stadium right there. You see all that green? Yeah, there's a lot of green. Oh, bring in the fog. This is 1045, and we're saying, Doug Freeman, who is our fabulous director, was saying, how are we going to see the field? Yeah, that was kind of that, uh, well, mid-California mid gets that Thule fog. Yeah, that's kind of, I've driven through that stuff before. You can't see your hood or your car. We're just glad it's clear tonight and a long way to go for the Huskies. They will run Alexis. He hammers for about three, maybe four yards before the tackle is made by Carl Pema, the cornerback. 10.45 a.m. Jeremy that, Williams. That was about the time you and I and, and Rich, at least we're the strongest crew in the country. You went in there, you tried to break the weight room again. Nope. I'll be darned. You know, and I'll tell you, you talk about a facility, and once again, it's an arms race, right? You, they, they won the Rose Bowl in 98 after that great 97 season, but they were able to build their facilities and add on and make a miraculous weight room. And there was one sign in that weight room, Fizz, that caught my attention. Alexis hammering his way forward needs to get to about the 18 yard line for a first down. Now Pickett going deep looking Reggie Williams way and he makes a marvelous catch in the face of tough defense by Marcus Trufant. Yeah that's 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 a nice play right there. Reggie Williams again Steve they, they set him up on the inside that time and they were able to just kind of throw a little fade and, and get the ball up the field. So, so this was a deal. Did you see the sign in WSU's weight room? You did see it, right? About pain, two pains in life. One, the pain of hard work, and two, the pain of regret. That caught my attention today because that's all Mike Price is talking to these guys about. Lay it on the line. No regrets thus far as they have the lead, and here is Pickett going again to Charles Frederick. You know, Reggie Williams' last catch, that was 34 yards, now total on two catches in this game. Reggie Williams needed 24 yards to set the single season receiving record set by Jerome Payton a few years back, and Reggie has it now. Do you know that he's only a sophomore and is already Washington's receiving yardage leader Amazing. in the career? 2,200 plus yards now. now. They throw it a lot more than they used to. But still. Yeah, they do. Big numbers. <laughs> Here's Alexis slashing for the first down past midfield. And that is what Rick Neuheisel told us last night when we met with him. He said, Cody Pickett is as good as any Washington quarterback, but he said he also gets more chances. That's He's true. Throwing hey, the football over hey, 500 times. Hey, Steve, take a look. Just keep an eye on 88 because this is what pursuit, this is. This is what makes great players great. It's it's the ability to run sideline to sideline and make plays. And Ryan Long right there, the great defensive lineman of Washington State, was there to track down great running back Rich Alexis. Pickett fires. Frederick drops the football incomplete. Good coverage by Carl Pema. Pema there, and that's a long throw. Pickett again throwing it on the mark, splitting the one and the zero on Charles Frederick's jersey. This guy, this guy, I, I'm still amazed at Pickett. Total offensive numbers leading the Pac-10, 340, I'm sorry, 335 yards per game, and his passing yards per game is at 347 yards per game. Passing. He's now 13 of 20 for 155 yards. The one touchdown came on his one yard sneak. Second and 10. Cougars do not blitz. Kevin Ware is stopped. Oh, good defensive play by Hamza Abdullah.
Here is our online question. Name the fiercest rivalry in NCAA football this weekend. Yale, Harvard, Brigham Young, Utah, Michigan, Ohio State, Auburn, Alabama, or the Apple Cup. How don't you have SC UCLA on there? You can have that my as your friends right at, info. My friends at FoxSports.com. I got a Trey Lurison does such a great job with FoxSports.com weekly. Glad to be a part of that. Third and ten. Pick it with time. Completes it for the first down to Charles Frederick, who wasn't sure where he was, so he leaned forward to make sure he got the first down, and he got it by an additional two yards. Well, that's their third conversion on seven attempts, a third down, Steve. And, you know, they, they, they march along at that 47% clip season long, but that, that, again, heck of a throw. Great pattern development by Washington. They got guys spread across the field, and, you know, again, Cody Pickett, when he's hot, He's hot. Well, Frederick's been his go to guy. He has six catches now for 71 yards. Alexis. Well, you know, that, that, we were talking about the offensive line earlier, and I said they've got to be more violent coming off that line of scrimmage to help the run. As a team, Washington is only 2.3 yards per carry this year. That's yeah. way low for a Husky football team. Yeah. It, it, you know it is 2.3 yards is unacceptable rushing the football but you got to look at what they've done you, you know in really overall yards yards per play I believe Steve they're right about 5.6 yards per play and I'll tell you in a moment uh, 5.3 yards per play which which isn't bad when you take all the cube numbers and then uh, average them out. Pickett in trouble, trying to dump it off, but he was slugged to the ground first, and it is just an incomplete pass. Third down and nine. Hamza Abdullah on the blitz. Hey, hey, Steve, you want a great story on Ryan Long? I'm talking to Mike Walker, the defensive line coach before the game, and at the beginning of the year, he told Ryan Long, hey, if you get, if you get 10 sacks, I'll get an air ring. And Mike Walker goes, Rams, look. I got an earring. I said, he's got 13 sacks now. So he said, now if you get 13, I got to get a tattoo. Oh, stop Mike it. Walker's going to get a tattoo because Ryan. Lo oh yeah. So I said, Mike, what are you going to get? And what Mike, happened to bets with milkshakes and steaks? And well, he's going to get. I said, what kind of tattoo are you going to get? He goes, I said, you're going to get a cougar, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, because he I haven't get a dog. No, he goes, I haven't decided yet. Oh yeah. Third and eight. Pickett reads the defense, fires left incomplete, intended for Charles Frederick. And I okay. wonder if they're picking on Carl Payma's side. They are. That's why they're going at Frederick. That was the you seventh bet. attempt at Charles. You bet they're staying away from Marcus Trufant. I think they go for it here on fourth down, Steve. Two down territory, why not? Take a shot. You got 225 left in the second. John, they're bringing John Anderson out, but I got to tell you, I don't agree with it. John Anderson wasn't close on the last attempt from 50. This is a 50, 51 yarder, 52. He's hit six, 50 plus in his career. I, I know, but it's the cold behind him. No, 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 no. The, the wind is swirling, and this is a difficult kick. It hits the goalpost. Call it crazy. I'm going to play to win now. I, I, I know points are points. There is no gimme in a 51 yard field goal. And yes, it's close. But guess what? He hit the post. And he had plenty of leg, too. Yep. Well, Anderson trying to cut the lead to seven. It's a still a 10 point Cougar, Cougar edge. I didn't like how he missed the first one from 50. He 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 shanked it hard left, and you know what? Well, Tried you know, to overcompensate. Mike, you know Mike Price won't play conservative with 218 left. Heck no. He runs the bootleg, and Gasser runs out of bounds near the Washington sideline. 212 to play in the first half. Those Trojans, they're knocking on that BCS door. They will entertain Notre Dame, USC. Beats Notre Dame. They should be going to a BCS Bowl. Down the field they go. Jerome Riley inside Washington territory to the 36-yard line. You're right, Steve, about 
And I don't mean to detract from that play because that's a great throw by Jason Gesser. But and we'll talk we'll talk about this in the second half, I'm sure. But the Pac-10 this year really two they they got some qualified teams to play multiple BCS games. They had Riley yeah. being covered by Ben Madabi, a middle linebacker. Well, you, you know what? Washington has not had the answer to number 84 today at all. Jerome Riley has run the ball effectively on a reverse. He's caught a couple huge plays down the field. And, and you know what? Mike Price told us he's our best receiver. Jonathan it, Smith just got lit up. But but I think they got three great receivers, and they do. I mean, DeVar Darling, you can't argue. DeVar Darling, as, as Mike, Mike Levenseller said, prototypical NFL player. I mean, 6'3", 205, strong coming off the line of scrimmage, too. You can't bump him because he'll knock your teeth out. He power cleans 330. That's why you can't bump him. Strong man. Second down, 10 yards to go. No pain, Bush. no gain. Six foot six. Off left side. Five wides. Yes, sir. Going deep. Almost intercepted by Nate Robinson. It looked like there was a miscommunication yeah. because Darling cut his route short. Yeah. And the pass went way over his head. Yeah, five wides. Jason Gesser, he thumb pointed. He knew he was, he knew he wasn't right here. Watch him. He gets the ball. This is where he's so good. Yep, they sat it down. He sat it down because Nate Robinson was over the top. So if you got a defender over the top, you got to sit down. Third down for That's Washington State. Washington State with three timeouts. 106 left. Blitz on. Gets her over the middle. There's the enemy again. First down inside Husky territory to the 22 yard line. That is such a huge play. Bienemann looked like he late release Steve he kind of kind of snuck out he's going to be right over here okay and he's going to he ends up delaying watch a little sneak oh man that's like a little F delay it's just like a fullback okay but you're utilizing your tight end who lined up the end of the line of scrimmage comes underneath you let the defensive lineman come in a little bit linebackers DBs get their deep drops and you're able to put it up underneath how about Bienemann though Three catches in the Apple Cup game after yep. only seven, and, and this is a kid who's a true freshman. Gesser doesn't go to his tight ends that much. Only one Cougar tight end had any receptions in their first ten games, and that's Troy Bienemann. Well, seven. Hey, credit the Washington State offensive lines. Then because Gesser comes in the least with, with the least amount of sacks on a quarterback in the. Band. Jonathan Smith slashing through for about six, seven yards. That offensive line's doing a great job. Josh Parrish, big tackle, number 50, left tackle. He's a man, 6'6, 320. Well, Jason Gesser, you talked about his leadership. Yep. This is a guy who just knows how to win. Hey, just win, baby, right? I mean, at the end of the what counts? 23 9 as a starter. At Washington State, and of course, leading the Cougars to school record number three. You know, they're not done yet. At number three ranking, you never know. I mean, BCS and, and Mike Price is talking, hey, let's go. Okay, over under. Mike Levenseller right there, too. Look at the last several years. Look at where Washington State is, Steve. They're number three, okay? And, and to me, that is so awesome. Oregon right there, 18 and 5. Texas, 20 and 4. <laughs> and then, you know, you know, you're the champion until someone knocks you off. 21 and 0 in the last two years. Wow. We talked with uh, Coach Mike Price about his senior or his senior quarterback Jason Gesser. You know, I want him to have the ball a lot. <laughs> Because he's really the, he's really the guy. He's really he's really made this team and this program. You know, he's held us together through the rough times, and uh, and he's a winner, and uh, um, he's just a real special guy. He's probably the most valuable player that's ever played at Washington State in the school's history. And that says a lot. Here goes Gesser. First down. First and goal at the six-yard line. I mean, when you're talking about people like Jack Thompson and Tim Rosenbaugh and True Bledsoe and Ryan Leaf and Mark Rippon, and you're saying this kid is the best in the school's history, that's saying plenty. And, and Steve, yeah, I mean, his his comment was kind of it, it got muffled a little bit right at the end. 
because if you don't see those words coming off Mike Price's lips, the most valuable player ever in the history. Ball, personal foul on the defense. After this is the goal from the end of the run, in, ball will be on the three yard line. In the history. Automatic first down. In the history of Washington State football. Man, Boston. that's saying something right there. Look at the names. I'm telling you. How did, I mean, Bledsoe, you know, first pick in the NFL draft, Ryan Leaf, big time collegiate player, struggled in the NFL. Jack Thompson, nice career in the NFL. And there's a throw in Samoan. He Jack had one of Thompson. the greatest passing games against Washington 311 yards and five touchdowns in 1976. Smith going outside. And did you know and who was he throwing to? Passes was, went to Mike Levenseller, Mike the Levin. offensive coordinator for Washington State. Mike Levenseller, the guy that never wears a coat. He's unbelievable. He's just he's showing those guns, man. That guy, I don't blame him. 46 years old, and the guy can run with a with a 80, 25 year old. Probably could run with all the 18 year olds coming in on campus. Well, Jason Gesser and a little spoof they did on Oregon putting up Joey Harrington in Times Square. They went to Dusty Washington, population 19, and they put his picture on the side of a grain silo. <laughs> There's Mike Price. He's out there, and Gesser's out there signing autographs. I mean, that was in the summertime. I imagine that was pretty a warm day out there. But did you know that... Um, Mike Price called Bill Moose, the o o Oregon athletic director, and said, we're going to do this. Would you mind? He goes, no, I think it's funny. Go ahead. Now Bill Moose, the AD at Oregon, of course, orchestrating a great campaign a year ago for Jeremy Harrington. And again, this year, they everyone knows who the Oregon Ducks are now. That's for darn sure. They went down to Oregon State today. And now again the Cougars spreading them out second down and goal and Gesser didn't like what he saw. No it's, it's Washington calling timeout because Washington substituted a bunch of people and then all of a sudden Washington State had a different different personnel grouping than what they thought they were going to get. They didn't have the right personnel on the field. So Ben Madavi heads to the sideline. Big moment here for the Huskies trying to stay in the game. They took the early lead 7 nothing, and they have been outscored by 20 since. And, and you know what? That's a good use of a timeout there, Steve, 17. because, look, you got 20 seconds left. You, you, hey, get the right people on the field. Randy Hart down there talking with Ben Madavi. Randy Hart, one of the great coaches in the land and, of course, an Ohio State player under Woody Hayes on the championship teams and you know what what I, you know when you look at New Heisel staff and even Price's staff but New Heisel staff a lot of guys played ball on Rick staff Rick himself a 84 Rose Bowl MVP he was uh, he and I were together for four years at UCLA Randy Hart next to him Ohio State championship under Woody and Keith Gilbertson and Axman and Bobby Houck and on down the line Second down, goal to go. Inside the five. Jesser with time firing. And he had Bush wide open and he threw it short. A flag will go down. And Bush was claiming yeah. holding. Well, they, they may. And look who's number 19 is. Reggie Williams. Reggie Williams. The number one on offense. Receiver. See, you see, look at on the back of the, his uh, jersey right there. You see his number? Sorry, Gordon. Oh, but he called the flag on Reggie. Pass interference, defense. Ball will be placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. Reggie Williams comes off the field. Here's a nice matchup. They put Reggie Williams on Mike Bush, and I'll tell you why. Well, you know what? It's a nice push-off by Bush, and then Reggie Williams holds on to him. But you know why they did that, right? Because they always throw the jump ball to the 6'6", you know, basketball player to, to score a touchdown. Gesser in trouble, flipping it back right incomplete. He felt the pressure right side, and there's another flag down. I'd love to know this penalty. I'm going to sit down because I'm getting excited now. Oh, Gordon Reese is going to call grounding. That's. But he well, felt let's, let's that hold defensive it. pressure. Let's hold a teleconference here.
the foul for intentional grounding is going to be waved off. The quarterback was outside the five-yard belt, <laughs> and the ball did cross the line of scrimmage. Therefore, by rule, it's not a foul. So wow. Gesser didn't drift that far. And he got out of harm's way. Owen Biddle. Okay, second goal. Again, watch. Well, they look like they're going to run the ball right now. They're in a closed down formation. They brought Three in tights. Hallberg, the tight end. And they will run left. Jonathan Smith met and is down at the two yard line. Fine play by Marquise Cooper, the junior from Gilbert, Arizona. Marquise Cooper, Steve, is one of the fastest players there, there is in the Husky program. And he's a he's an inside linebacker. I mean, here's a guy, watch him. He's going to end up racing across a formation. And look at him. He's behind. He's in the, look at him close. Oh, my goodness. Marquise Cooper's one of those guys that's going to play on NF in the NFL on Sundays. Flat out. He's a junior right now. He'll come back next year. But when you can run that fast from the inside linebacker spot, the only other guy that I've ever seen run that fast, Junior Seau. I mean, he, he could have been a... He could have been an awesome, he could have been an all-pro running back. But with this timeout, you wonder what they are going to do. Four seconds remain. And one of the key moments came last year in Washington, Washington State's game yep. at the one-yard line where they stuffed them. So they're going to bring in Drew Dunning. Points. After that, Huskies went 99 yards after they stopped Washington State on fourth and goal yep. and took a 7-0 lead. They'll go on and win last year's games. 26 to 14 as Pickett threw for 371 and Reggie Williams caught 11 passes for 203 yards. Now Dunning with a tough angle. I was going to say not not the easiest of angles right here but Dunning inside the 19 one for one. And they fake it. Uh, and Washington snap. State has to throw it away so they come up empty. There is a flag down though. If this is a late hit, it will really cost Washington a bad snap. Boy. Ah, oh, boy. Intentional grounding on the offense. That penalty is declined. Half is over. That is a great series by the Washington defense to keep Washington State out of the end zone. The holder, Colin Henderson, Steve, never got the ball down. And, and we all know he's a great thrower. He just ends up trying to that's make his, a play. That's his first incompletion in his career. Yeah. He was 10 for 10 prior to that. And Mike Price is furious. Yeah, because those three points, boy, I tell you, you need those points at the end of the half. Wow. Man. 17 to 7. Cougars with the 10 point lead. They need a victory to clinch at least a spot in that Rose Bowl. It's the Apple Cup, and the Cougars have the lead over Washington 17 to 7. Steve Fiziak along with Tom Ramsey. Last year, Washington won the Apple Cup, and Reggie Williams had an incredible game 11 catches, 203 yards. This year, you said the key matchup would be Marcus Trufant covering Reggie Williams, and right now he's done the job. Steve, right now, Marcus Trufant, number 45, the top corner, maybe possibly in the Pac 10, shutting down Reggie Williams, quite possibly the best receiver in the Pac 10, and it's a great matchup, but I expect Washington to come back and try to find big number one. How about the first half stats? Well, it's pretty amazing stats. Pretty even so far. The time of possession, Washington State usually is a little behind in time of possession. They had the one turnover on Jason Gesser's first throw. It led to a short field, and also it led to Washington's first points. The time of possession, as Tom talked about, favoring Washington, but Washington State has been minus in time of possession all season long, and they are 9-1. and one. Washington State is coming off back-to-back -back wins over two of the Pac-10's best teams, beating number 17 Arizona State by 22 on November 2nd, and last week knocking off defending Pac-10 champion Oregon by 11. 
Washington will be kicking off to the Cougars. And the Cougars Sammy Moore is back deep Sammy Moore who caught a pass for 67 yards and his first touchdown in the first half comes out and brings it up past the 20 and cut down at the 27 yard line. Let's go down on the sideline to Rich Walls. All right. Thanks Steve. Rick Neuheisel said topic A in the locker room at halftime was don't panic. He thinks his team is playing well. He said they just need to get more to show for the times they get inside the 50 yard line. He also said they need to obviously get the ball to Reggie Williams. They didn't throw to him a whole lot in the first half. He says that's going to change early in the second half. Gentlemen. Rich Reggie Williams with only two catches for 35 yards. His first catch set up their only touchdown, but very quiet after that. Rick Neuheisel with a record of six and five, three and four. Washington could finish as high as fifth in the conference or as low as eighth. The Huskies still have an opportunity for four different bowls the way things play out, but by winning this game, They'd still be eligible for all four. If they lose, they might only be eligible for one, and that could be the local Seattle Bowl if Utah beats Brigham Young. Jonathan Smith is the lone back, and he will run right. And he is met and knocked down. A fine defensive play. Terry Johnson. Take a look at Jason Gesser's first half numbers. You know, again, he comes in, he's pretty darn efficient. He had the one interception. Of course, he also had a touchdown throw. 163 yards, pretty good on seven completions. I'll tell you that, he had a couple big chunks. Of course, that big one going to Sammy Moore. And they beat Derek Johnson on that play. So they went after their Washington's best corner and came away with six. Now it's second and 12, the blitz is on. Gesser falls down and Johnson covers him. Kai Ellis with the pressure, and Ellis came from the outside in. Kai Ellis is so good off the edge, Steve. Here's a guy who's just so dominant a player, and you know, he came into the program. You see, he has a little trouble. I mean, he's got his knees are, are the bothersome entity for him, but the guy's built like, you know, Jack Lane times two. Jack Lane, of course, still going, still doing push ups every day. <laughs> I read an article on him recently, man. The guy's just father time. Well, here's a third and 22 big moment for Washington's defense. They get after Gesser again, and he gets free and throws it, and it's dropped by Jerome Riley, or it would have been a first down. Well, what's going to happen, Steve? I believe he was past the line. Gesser was past the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball, even though it was just a stellar. Athletic play by Jason Gesser. Watch because Terry Johnson puts a lot of heat on him, number 99, and Johnson might be playing his best game of the season, harassing Gesser. Look at the throw, though, right on the money. Whoops. And Riley said, it, yeah, wonderful first half. We'll wait a couple minutes and wait to hear from the ref, Gordon Reese. And this is going to work out for a Washington State first uh, down. Automatic first down, if that's the case. But why does it take so long for them to make the decision? Roughing the passer. We don't have, how about that? We didn't have a microphone. I wonder if there was technical difficulty. Anthony Kelly, watch. He's going to come from right back behind Jason Gesser on the backside. And you know what? Come on. That's he incidental got contact. By a Washington State well, Cougar. Derek Roach, number 77. I mean, anyhow. All right. First down, Cougars. That hurt. That's a big a turn third of events. And 22 conversion. You bet. Now Gesser goes to work again. And he fumbles the football. And Washington has it. That's even. Kai Ellis with the strip, Rams. That's even a bigger play, Steve. That Kai Ellis, you, you know, this is how important that three points was right before the half. You know, all of a sudden Drew Dunning, you know, there for a chip shop. And, and you see where now again turnover short field Kai Ellis comes right there ends up gets great push inside and he stays after it he rips the ball away from Gesser and he also recovers his own forced fumble Kai Ellis had the motor run it Cougars by 10 that could change Alexis firing through first down inside the 25 yard line. Doesn't take much, Steve, in games like this. So much emotion. And take a look at Rich Alex Alexis and his FedEx numbers. First ground, first half ground stats, 35 yards right at the middle. 
How about that? 11 carries. Keep bringing it. Although, you know, he bent that one, kind of, kind of went to the right, ended up in the middle for a big gain. Nice look at where they're tapping into that Washington State front again. Keep your eye on that guy, Ryan Long. Alexis motion blitzes on he throws to the hot receiver. It's rich Alexis for a first down inside the 10 yard line. Oh a good read by Cody Pickett because it was a full on blitz. Take a look Cody Pickett again Steve you see where he's looking on the snap of the ball the the other side he's looking left. Alexis just comes right in following big number one Reggie Williams. I don't know if that was a mix up or if that's just real good play by the Huskies but <laughs> either way first down. Now they fake to the fullback throw to the wide receiver and like Rick Neuheisel said to Rich Walsh at halftime we are going to get the ball to Reggie Williams. They do here for five yards. He does a great job on just down and out. He seals himself off like a, a basketball player. You know what? That's what football is. Football is just a, a real fast game of of hoop on on some fake grass in this instance where you, you got to shade each other. You got to shade the defender. You get a lot of three on twos two on ones and you got to protect the ball. Thank you. Giving it to Zach Tuiasa Sopo. And with that last pass to Reggie Williams, Cody Pickett became the first passer in Pac 10 history to throw for over 4,000 yards in one season. How about that? How about that? And the first thing that blows into my head, of course, is 4,000 yards equals how many millions of dollars at the next level? Oh, you know what? It's all about the game. It's he's playing it for the love of the game. I know. At the next level, it's all about the money. <laughs> it's a, third and goal. <laughs> sorry to, sorry to go that direction. Double tight end. Pickett drops the ball and is cut down at the 15. He covered it himself. But instead of seven, they may have to settle for three. Well, that's a blow up. Ball slips out of his hand. I don't even think it hit Alexis's hip. And then, boy, that was Fred Shavey's number six, who came in like a bullet off the edge. And that's his specialty. Now a field goal from 34 by John Anderson. He missed his first two of the game, but they were from 50. And 51. And Steve, no gimme again. No good. John Anderson, 0 for 3. It's in his head right now, Steve. You overcompensate, you push right, no good. A sold out Martin Stadium with Washington State against Washington. Jason Gesser, the quarterback. And Gesser will give the football to his running back, John Tippins, and Tippins a short gain to the 25 yard line. Well, we talked about all of the records that Jason Gesser has broken them, and one of them was all the records that were set by the great Drew Bledsoe. And Drew now joins us from his hotel room as his Buffalo Bills are getting ready to play the New York Jets. Drew, I would imagine. This matchup, the Apple Cup, has some great memories for you. Oh, man. It's uh, the game we played in 92 in the snow uh, when we, uh, we knocked off the Huskies. It was my last, uh, my last home game in college, and uh, it's still my greatest memory in all the sports in playing that game. I was, you know, regardless of the Super Bowl or whatever you want to talk about, uh, that's my favorite memory in all the sports. Meantime, Gesser goes back deep to the right side. Let's go back to the 92 game, and I wanted to ask you, Drew, was the pass intended for Philip Bobo or C.J. <laughs> Davis? Yeah, I'm taking that to my grave. <laughs> of, course, of course I was throwing it to Bobo. Of, of course. No, uh, you know, I, I'll be honest. I was throwing the ball to C.J. I'll, uh, I'll go ahead and be honest there, but uh, uh, Philip came across and made a great, great catch on the play. We ended up in having a snowball fight underneath the goalpost. <laughs> Hey, hey, Drew, as a former uh, New England Patriot, I, I could talk to you on alumni status now, but 
I got to tell you, man, you made me proud a year ago serving. I mean, you were the ultimate team player in the run to the Super Bowl. And, and at times you stepped in. I mean, you stepped up in the AFC Championship game and had had the best one of the best games of your career because you won that game. And of course, going to the Super Bowl had to be a great experience. But now after having lived that great experience, the people in New England love you, the people in the state of Washington love you. Now upstate New York loves you. What's up with that? It's crazy. Never, never, never would have seen it coming in a million years. But it's it's been an absolutely great situation. Uh, you know, going through what I went through last year, uh, I think really renewed my passion for the game. You know, you play. We're spoiled, man. We get to play this game. We get paid to do it. I'm 30 years old, and I still get to act like I'm 17 or 18 years old. But you do it for long enough, and at a certain level, you can you can take it for granted to a certain extent. And having it taken away and now getting a chance to do it again, uh, you know, has really renewed my passion for the game. And Drew. Washington just partially blocked the punt by Washington State again Drew Bledsoe cannot see the action he is on the phone in a hotel getting ready for the Buffalo Bills game against the New York Jets but you're talking about your youthful enthusiasm did you learn any of that from the guy who coached you at Washington State Mike Price who's one of the funniest guys in the game Mike Price has got to be the you know one of the coolest coaches in the nation to play for he he coaches with a with a passion and excitement for the game, and that carries over to his players. Playing for Mike is an, just an, an awesome experience, and I'm just so happy for him to see the success that he's having here the last couple of years. He is one of those guys where, as they say, sometimes nice guys do finish first, but I would imagine the joy that you had playing for him. But Mike did reveal, he said, you know, I think Drew was a bit nervous when the snow started falling before the game and warm-ups, were you? <laughs> no, man, I was having a ball in the snow. I was out there, I was playing, uh, Lynn Swan was doing the game, so I'm out there playing catch with Lynn Swan, which is cool regardless, and then with the snow flying around, man, it was, I was as relaxed it could be, as could be going at the end of that game. I think Mike was the one that was nervous. Hey, Drew, go. Drew, tell me your personal highlight, college or pro, to date. Oh, that game, that, that game, uh, you know, when Phillip came up with that catch, uh, you know, and, and we're laying there, you know, we're in the snow underneath the goalpost throwing throwing snow at each other and all that stuff. That's my my favorite memory in all of sports, even with all that's happened in the NFL and all that stuff. My favorite memory was the Apple Cup and, and probably always will be. Well, there have been so many great memories in this wonderful rivalry. This is meeting number 95. Washington won last year 26 14. It is third down and four for the Huskies on their own 48 yard line. Blitz on. Pick it in trouble. Drops the football. It is picked up by the Cougars and they have it at the 25. Go Cougs. So beyond everything else, Drew, you gave the Cougs a little luck. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. That's awesome. Now they got to punch it in there for the score and uh, take control of this game for sure. Well, Fred Shavies was the man who made the hit on quarterback Cody Pickett, and Isaac Brown picking up the loose ball and hustling it all the way to the 25-yard line. Now see Steve right there. Pickett just didn't have that snap throw that Bledsoe has when it comes blitz time, and that's what keeps quarterbacks alive and well. <laughs> yeah, you you got to get the ball out of your hands, man. Let the other guys take the hits. <laughs> They're tougher than we are. We got to let them have the ball. Jason Gesser is still learning in that area. He runs a play action pass, has to throw it away because uh, defensive lineman Manasi Hopoy was in his face. And even Gesser said earlier this year, Drew, that he said sometimes they have more competitive spirit than common sense. Is that a an attribute acquired through experience? You know, I think that the, uh, it's almost the opposite. You know, as a quarterback, and Jason, I want, I love watching the kid play. He plays as tough as, as anybody I've ever seen at the position. But uh, you know, your competitive spirit, you know, makes you want to try and make something on every play. And I know Jason feels that way, and that's the way he plays. But there are times when you have to be smart and just cut the ball in the sand. Well, he went for one right down the middle to Jerome Riley. It is broken up, and it'll be second down and ten. But Drew, thank you so much for joining us. You're one of the real heroes here in Pullman, Washington, and good luck tomorrow against the New York Jets. Hey, thanks, guys. Nice Be to talk to you. Best of luck, Drew. Same here. All right. Well
Drew Bledsoe, one of the great quarterbacks in Washington State history, and they have had plenty of them. And the guy who has eclipsed all of those records, Jason Gesser, now facing a third and ten. He will send two wide to the right side, and Mike Bush and Jerome Riley and DeVar Darling might be in single coverage on the left. Now he goes motion. They throw back left side, and there's the tight end again, Troy Bieneman. And Bieneman very close to a first down. And Steve, again, this is that area where it's so close to a first down. You, you know, if you can go for it here on fourth, which Washington State may elect to do, they'll do it. They do a nice job picking up the blitz inside, and then they just flick the ball out. Bieneman, Bieneman. You know, he's such a good player. Boy, he, he doesn't look like a tight end at all. He's one of those just big body guys. That's that, his fourth catch. Yeah. You think that's a wrinkle that Mike Price put in this week? Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So now the field goal attempt of 32 yards by Drew Dunning. John Anderson, meantime, for Washington, has missed all three of his field goal attempts. Dunning. Tough night kicking. Wow. The wind has not been traveled. swirling. It's cold. Cold still, damn. the Cougars by 10. Cody Pickett back. He wants to go deep, looking for his big play guy. And the speed of Paul Arnold was there, but step for step for with him was Carl Pema. And speaking about the Pac-10, we got the commissioner in the house tonight, Tom Hansen, the commissioner. He just stepped up in the box with us, along with Gary Thomas, the president of the Tournament of Roses. And uh, we spotted Mr. Thomas earlier arriving to the game, Steve, with two dozen roses under his arm in a box. Hmm. If Washington State wins, he will hand those roses to Mike Price, and Mike Price still has a chance to watch Miami go to Syracuse and then welcome Virginia Tech. Miami has to win both of those games, or a team like Washington State would play for the national championship against Ohio State. It is third down, two yards to go. Cody Pickett, he will throw. And Reggie Williams with the catch and breaks free for the first down to the 34 yard line. What a great Reggie player Williams. is Reggie Williams. Big target, strong. His fifth catch. But all have been short yardage. They, 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 and, and you know, here's a guy, I mean, look at the shots he's taking, Steve. And, you know, I, look at he just gets the first down and he tries to get more. That's, that's just great playing. But Gary Thomas, the, the, the president of the Tournament of Roses, even though the BCS championship this year is it at the Fiesta Bowl and the Rose Bowl still is the most lucrative of all the bowls. They pay out fourteen point one million dollars. The Fiesta. The Sugar. And of course the Orange all paying thirteen point six million. They go deep for Williams. Does he hold on? What a play. This guy had two red jerseys all over him, and Reggie Williams with great concentration with a 38-yard catch. Well, he had two catches at halftime. New Heisel said we'd go to him a lot, and that is four catches already in the third quarter. Well, you know, you're up here in the eastern state of Washington. That's that's a pull, pull, because that's a duck <laughs> coming out of Co Cody Pickett's hands. But you know what? They, they said something at halftime. Hey, look, let's go deep. Right now, Reggie Williams has been deep. With Cody Pickett's throwing one on the other side to Paul Arnold. He threw right there to Reggie Williams. You got to get the ball down the field if you're the Washington Huskies. And right there, nice execution. They try and run again, and they have not been able to do anything running. There is a flag down, but Washington has averaged about two yards per carry running the football. <laughs> but right now, there are three automatics in the BCS Bowl game. There is. Reddick coming from the right side and making the catch. Eric Coleman with the stick, so they get just a few yards back. That was Rich Alexis, excuse me, 24, not 21. And Rich goes down hard. He has never been able to stay completely healthy in his Husky career. High ankle sprain set him back earlier this year, and now it's the left hand. He got hammered right there, too. He came in a little underneath, and he gets 
Oh, maybe it's just how he fell. But Rich Alexis, we saw him fall on his left side, and we just assumed it was his left hand. So it's that ankle that had troubled him earlier this year. Frederick wide left. He'll be in single coverage with Carl Pema. Williams to the right. True fonts on him. And Ware holds on, but comes up about four yards shy of a first down. Now, do you go to Anderson, who's missed three field goals in this game? I don't know if you do, Steve, but I know that Cody Pickett wanted to go here. You're going to see him run the post, but you're also going to see that player right there, Eric Coleman, turn, and he just ends up turning and covering Reggie Williams. So they get a double. They get it kind of over under. They take away the big time receiver, and so Cody Pickett has to come off, go to his secondary outlet receiver. You know, I was going to say you don't bring on John Anderson, but they brought him on. Long enough. No good. John Anderson has missed all four of his field goal attempts, but a flag is down at the 30. And they rough It's him. against Washington State. So instead, as Anderson now limps to the sideline, they still have a shot at seven. It, it's not a kicker's night. And when I said that, when I, when I was down on the field during pregame warm-up, I was talking to Keith Gilbertson. We couldn't figure out where the wind was come pushing from, but it's cold, it's it's moist, it's wet, it's miserable. Let's face it, down on but the field. Then why have Washington and Washington State kickers been so successful in the past? I don't Personal know. Foul, I, roughing a kicker. <laughs> on a I asked him a question, <laughs> he couldn't answer. The spot, automatic first they, down. They've had good kickers they've in the past. Great kickers, and Anderson's a terrific kicker. But, but they haven't always had to play in this kind of environment, and, and it is. It's wet, cold, number 18. Curtis Nettles. Curtis Nettles, guilty of the penalty. So Washington Reminded comes up me. with a first down at the 11 of the Cougars. You, you know, Steve, it's just it's a difficult night to kick, and it's a difficult night to hold the ball and throw it as well. I mean, it's not an easy night to, to execute if you're one of those perimeter players and special special teams players. Tight end goes motion. Pick it. And dropping the football, Braxton Clemen, and they're going backwards. How many times has Washington uh -huh. hurt themselves when they put themselves in a great position? They've missed three field goals, actually four, but that one was resulted in a penalty. Well, this is what they can do, Steve. They, they still have ample time. 3.30 left in the third quarter. Rick Neuheisel told us yesterday, he said it before the game, we need to finish strong. All right. The reality is, yes, they misfired again on first down. You got to punch this one in the end zone. You got to punch this in on this set of downs right here. They spread them out. Williams left. Proof on him. Pickett throws the other way, and it's almost picked off. The intended receiver was Patrick Reddick. Steve. Reddick. Yep. No, uh, once again, I, I'm sorry I jumped in there, but Marcus Trufant, he's the best player on the field tonight. Don't go at him. Don't go at it, but you know what he's saying? Bring it on, man. Keep bringing it, and I'll keep defending it because true font right now as good as they come, breaking on the football, 11 career picks, tied for six all time on the WSU list. And man, I'm telling you what, right now he is—he's got that inner confidence thing going. He's got the mojo working. And that last intended wide receiver was Eddie Jackson. So there is Williams and True Font. Those two guys up there. Pickett looking right, going right. Paul Arnold tipped at the last moment wow. by Jeremy Bohannon. And it Pretty will nice. be fourth down. Pretty nice throw. Pretty nice throw. Pretty nice defense by Washington State all R game R long. This is a team, Washington, that has scored 83 points in their last two games against pretty good teams, yep. Oregon State and Oregon. Anderson is back this time from 35 straight on. Well, this is the first time he's been straight on in, f in five attempts. First time. Up. Got it. His first. Washington within seven.
We are back at Martin Stadium with Washington down to Washington State 17 to 10. John Anderson with a short kickoff to the six yard line. And Jonathan Smith brings it back and is knocked down shy of the 20 yard line. So now it is Jason Gesser time. This is an offense. The Washington State Cougars average 34 points per game. They've been held to 17. Washington, meantime, has an excellent offense, averaging 31 and a half, and they've been held to 10. You see Anderson finally finishing that drive. That's right. He's on scoring drive. 12 plays, although a lot of those plays went backwards. A lot of them went backwards. But they were still able to get points. At least they got points out of it, Steve. Tippin past the 25. Tippin's first down and more. Tippins to midfield. Well, Marquise Cooper finally came over and dropped the hammer on him, but Tippins, what a nice run that was. Man, that, that is beautiful. That's why they're going to end up coming. Little delayed draw, bang. They lock up the linebacker right there. He puts a move on Owen Biddle in the open field. Biddle not even close. Olay. Tippins up the field, gain of 36. First down, Cougars. And that is picking up Jermaine Green, who is the starting tailback. Green not playing in this second half because of a groin pull. The only thing Biddle didn't have was that red cape. You know, <laughs> Olay, man, that was Tippins went right by him like he wasn't even there. Matador defense. John yeah. Tippins a big man. Yes, he is. Came in at 235 pounds. Mike Price said that's too heavy. Lost 15. Now he is over 500 yards rushing himself this year. They run the reverse again. This time it smelled out nicely and covered by Washington for a three yard gain. After earlier in the contest, they went for a 35 yard run by Jerome Riley. You know, this offensive line, Steve, they, they just keep plugging away. Locking up on people, big on big, neutralizing the defensive front of the Huskies. And that's where the Huskies had to show up tonight. Terry Johnson, 99, Kai Ellis, 90, Jafar Williams. But that offensive line of the Cougars right now, the deciding factor. Aaron Tippins again. He will come up shy of the first down, but a late lunge brings him within three yards. On third and three now. Let's see if they stay in the ground or Gesser kind of scrambles around and finds somebody open. Th that's what that Washington State offense does so well. You, it's hard to game plan against them because they're effective at both running the ball and spreading you out and passing the ball. And right now, I'd say by formation, they're three by one. Okay, formation, I'd say they're going to pass. They do, and Gesser firing it, and it's complete for a first down to Jerome Riley. You know, Gesser comes to the line of scrimmage, and he says, okay, who has single coverage? Yeah, and yes, he does. He finds him. Well, and you know what pro football is all about, Steve? Honest to goodness. I, I mean, here, here's Riley. He's going to shoot out here in the flat. Just hang. He's just kind of the outlet guy. He's, if they go with him, you know, he doesn't throw it. If they don't go with him, Biddle over there, and I, Ben Badavi there to fi finalize the tackle. But what's interesting in pro football, the quarterback, your lone responsibility, find the guy that's single covered. And, and trust me, it's hard to do. <laughs> Gesser finds him a lot. He is only 9 of 19, even though he's completed almost 60% of his passes during the season. Tipping, tipping over a couple of tacklers and gaining about four. The thing in it, pro football, they run so many combination coverages it throws you off. But check out Derek Roach. The big offensive guard. He's having a great game. He took out Terry Johnson and then he climbs the ladder and dives at Ben Madavi and sends him flying. And that's big time play right there, Steve. He's never been a reserve. He has started all four years in the Palouse. Roach, the right guard. Gesser from shotgun. Again, the flip. Mike Bush, the catch. Bush drops the football and Washington has it. Cooper, Marquise Cooper, Steve. Again, speed is the factor. Marquise Cooper comes from his inside linebacker position all the way out to cover the flat. And 
Mike Bush looked like he just lost the handle, Steve. It looked like Bush just flat out dropped it. I don't know if it got swatted out of his hands or not. And Washington now plus two in turnovers, and that has helped. One on one. Oh, Wilbur Hooks. Wilbur Hooks is there to knock the ball out. Nice play by Wilbur Hooks. And, and Wilbur Hooks, of course, if you knew where he, he's been playing on the Nate Robinson had a little corner blitz. Hooks came over to pick up Bush, knocked it out. Cooper recovers. Nice play. So the Huskies have a chance to tie it. Six seconds remain before the fourth quarter, and that has usually been Husky time. Washington has always been a brilliant fourth quarter team under Rick Neuheisel. Good job, good job, good job, good job. This year, Washington State's come from behind. And how many? What, seven, seven of ten. Game. Seven of ten Five games. Yards the but they're five. ahead. Still first down. They're ahead now. Well, they were behind again, though, at the beginning of the game. You know, what was interesting about Washington, in the last three years, the Huskies have only outscored their opponents by nine points in quarters one through three. But Rick Neuheisel, who's so good at clock management, in the fourth quarter, the Huskies have outscored their opponents by 125 points, 354 to 229, and we're just six seconds away from the fourth. Well, Pick that's, it. That's been Watch the strong. screen incomplete. That's finishing strong, you know, and I guarantee you right now, Steve, you know, you know what the guys on the other sideline are saying, Washington State sideline? They're saying, hey, remember two years ago? Remember 51 to three? Remember that game? That, that's sticking in their craw right now, and, and they're going to remember that one. I guarantee you Mike Price has said that to somebody over there. You know, Rick also told us last night, he said, no quarterback plays well against Washington State. They haven't had a quarterback this year who's played his game against the Cougars. He said, really, since Cody threw for 371 in the victory last year. We talked about the 125 points in the fourth quarter. What does it mean? 14 comeback wins. That's what it means. But right now, again, second long yardage for the Huskies. They bring four. Pickett going deep. Paul Arnold out there. And there's Pema, but pass interference. And it will be a first down for the Huskies. Now, Pema came over the top. He came over the top. And for a moment, you know, I thought Arnold had a shot. Again, the ball not coming out super clean. Look at that. Yeah, definitely interfered with. Payma takes one off the off the dome. You know, I mean, he's there, stride for stride, but he just had that contact. Well, the Huskies hoping it's their time. That's the end of the third quarter. The Cougars leading by seven. You're watching College Football Saturday, presented by Kiyosera on Fox Sports Net. And here is the flag. That one play. So automatic first down, but but the but the quarter can't end on that particular play. I believe is what he said, Gordon Reese. So. Washington will have a first down, but there will be one more play in the quarter, which, go, which makes sense. Defensive penalty, you got to you got to finish out the quarter of play. So zero on the clock for the end of the third quarter. One last play, and then we'll flip it. Reggie Williams down in this corner. Braxton Clement flashing through. Almost gets the first down, and that's the now end of the third quarter. Seven point lead for Washington State. You're watching College Football Saturday presented by Kiyosera on Fox Sports Net. Here's our Cabot Collection Apple Cup game summary. Washington State, 17 points came in the game's first 20 minutes. They're scoreless the last 25. 249 passing. Pickett goes over 4,000. Gesser, big play, Gesser. He averages 18 yards and his 10 completions, but three turnovers have really hurt the Cougars. And now the Huskies trying to capitalize. Reggie Williams will get the first down past midfield and for Reggie Williams only two catches in the first half they were determined to get him the football in the second half and they have he now has eight catches 
They just can't free him up enough, Steve. Marcus Trufant again there to make the hit and a tackle. You know, if I was Washington right now, I, I think of motioning Reggie Williams a little more right now. Maybe play him inside slot and at least have some movement with him and, and just create a little separation. Because right now off the ball, these two guys are locking horns and there's a it's there's no match at all. They just stymie each other. They run Clemens up the middle past the 45 down near the 43 yard line. And, and the reason I say that is because of the 49ers did it so many years with 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 Jerry Rice and now the Oakland Raiders are doing it with Jerry Rice and the Denver Broncos do it with Rod Smith. They, you move great players around, you put them in the slot, you put them outside, you move them a little bit because you create, even if you create six inches of a separation, that's all that guy needs. Because the great players will get open time and time again and then it just becomes delivery of the football on time. And Pickett is one of the best in the conference and the country at that. Completing better than 60% of his passes. He flips it to Williams, his ninth catch and seven of the second half. He's gone over the 100 yard mark, receiving because of the big play, but most of them have been little short five, six yard catches. He had the one bomb for about 36. True font again. They, they look to get a little, little crease, a little open window there, and, and it's a gain of, gain, of, uh, gain of four yards. Third and two. Third and two for the Huskies. Williams again. Williams and True Font here. Pickett throwing it. Williams was well covered by True Font. Fourth down oh, and two yards to go. It's frustrating. It's frustrating for me to watch. If you're a Husky fan at home, you're probably throwing something, one of those little, you know, like Nerf balls at the TV. Anyhow, or or that. <laughs> <laughs> I can't even say it. It's so ridiculous. Anyhow, go ahead and say it. No, I, I wasn't gonna. Before. I wasn't gonna. Can't. I'll tell, Derek, you, I'll tell you later. <laughs> Derek McLaughlin. Not a big. Now he pounded that oh, one boy. into the end zone. Wanted to get it inside the five, but it'll be Cougars football at the twenty when we come back. Here is our college football Saturday, Keo Sara. And it is Washington against number three, Washington State. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, Rich Waltz with you. We're at Martin Stadium, a sold out Martin Stadium, where if Washington State wins, they will head to the Rose Bowl. They will clinch the Rose Bowl bid with the Fiesta National Championship game. Still a possibility, but they need help from Syracuse and Virginia Tech against Miami. Cougars have the football trying to finish it off against Washington and there's Tippins and he is dropped for a three yard loss. Three wide left one to the right. The one to the right is Devar Darling. Yeah, Devar Darling's been pretty quiet. Guesser. Flips it to his tall wide receiver Mike Bush who at six feet six inches tall was one of the top players on the Washington State basketball team the last four years. You know that ball looked like it was it looked like it was tipped and it may just have been a high throw to Bush but man that was looked like a little risky throw to tell you the truth I mean I, I didn't ball didn't come out super fast okay third and six for the Cougars and what you got to do now you got to play to win the game. Don't play conservative. You got to keep opening up the can of goodies. Gesser flips it underneath and has his tight end Bianaman again for a first down. How big has this guy been in the game? The Apple Cup, true freshman tight end. He's caught only seven passes all year and he has. Four in this game. Let's go down the sideline to Rich Wall. Running back update: Jermaine Green for Washington State out with that sore groin. Rich Alexis, you saw him back in for a play. They've taped the ankle up. He's back in. Wide receiver for Washington: Charles Frederick, a sprained a knee. He is out for the game. Well, that's a big play. Wide receiver. They lose Rich. 
Right now, Cougars on offense. Yes, are going with the doubles on each side. Blitz from the right. They send it off. And this is Jerome Riley fighting for about six yards. You know that was a dual two by two there, Steve. Which Jerome Riley in the slot, he he's very dangerous. He's a guy that ends up coming out, and he's going to sit down and make a play. But Davi, the linebacker, has to come out. You see, no one covers him. No one covers Riley on the play, so Madavi has to come out from his inside linebacker job. They had a blitz on. They came in off the slot. And I think you're going to see a little bit more of that from the Huskies right now. They're bringing blitz again. Right here, Greg Carruthers was going to come. Gesser checks off now. He's getting to another play. Huskies are still staying in blitz. Gesser backs up. Whips it to the right side. Mike Bush is open. First down. Mike Bush got nailed too, Steve. He took a shot on his thigh. Man, he took a shot. Watch, this is this is what having a veteran quarterback's all about. They get it protected. You see his feet aren't pretty. Watch this hit. Owen Biddle comes in and just drills him. Mike Bush, you said basketball player, 6'6, 210, Riverside, California. He's all right. He's over there with Mike Levenseller. His receivers coach and offensive coordinator. Look at that, 20th all time. Hoops. Thousand point, that's a lot. Thousand points in basketball, thousand yards in football. Guess it. Rolling. Rolling. Away from the pressure. He'll be sacked. Back at the 45 yard line. The fifth sack and by Washington in the game. And Guesser slowing thing up. I thought Guesser was hurt, Steve. I think he hurt his leg. Yep. Right leg. Man, it, something didn't look right when he landed, and you know what? He's hurt. He is hurt. Man, that is what a, a tough shame. loss this would be. Now, Matt Kegel, the backup, has has seen a lot of snaps. Th this isn't pretty here. I, oh, oh, man, golly! You know, I saw the all. You know, Donovan McNabb, who saw the uh, NFL game last week. Oh, Ouch. Oh, oh ankle man. and then his oh, knee. No. Oh my goodness. Oh. oh that's so Matt Kegel comes off the bench. Man. I'll tell you, Don Mick Nab last week broke his ankle. He stayed in the game, played the whole game. On a broken leg. Jeez. Blitz. Kegel. Underneath he goes to the enemy the tight end and the enemy with his fifth catch of the game. But they will just gain about four or five back when they needed 26 for the first down. So here's Matt Kegel, a 6'5, 235 pound redshirt junior from Haver, Montana, the cousin of Ryan Lee. And, and oh, man. Still thinking about there's Jason Gesser getting work done over there, whether ankle or knee or both. But Kegel is very capable, Steve. Very capable. Three by one, three wides up top, one down below. And they sack him, rip the ball free. It's down and loose, and the Cougars will cover it. Riley Fitzchapel, very alert. That ball was just sitting there for about a second and a half. Manas Hopoy again, number 56 there. But Fit Chapel, you said, Steve, big number 78, who's graded out so well at that right tackle spot. He's the one that recovers it. Kai Ellis again just tomahawks the ball out of Kegel's hands. And then Fit Chapel there to recover it for the Cougars. A lucky break by the by the Cougs. Here is a punt, a high one. Fair catch made at the 26 yard line by Nate Robinson. That's a nice catch by Nate Robinson. Now it's time for the Cougar defense to step up with Jason Gesser out. Pickett blitz on Cody is swinging out of the 
pressure, and now he throws it away. Flag will come a flying. Well, that, that's not a fly. You know what? This is not a correct call by Gordon Reese. It's not, Steve. Because he was outside. When you're the outside tackle the tackle box, box, you can throw the ball up into the 18th row. I don't get it. Newhouse is, should be hot. Maybe he's just cold. But you can you can get rid of the ball. On the offense. But then what is intentional the grounding? Only in the box. Well, I, that's what I don't understand. I, I, well, that's know. a rule that probably will be changed next college football season. Watch who makes the play. It's off the edge here. I believe that's Fred Chavis or Ike Brown comes in like a missile. I don't know. Hey, man, if, you, if you're out of the tackle box as the rule stage, you can you can fling it anywhere you want. So there can be no intentional grounding outside the tackle box. That's my understanding. Okay. Well, it's second and 29. Might have to go. Might have to go past the line of scrimmage. The ball might have to go past the line of scrimmage. Alexis, knocked down. Fine defensive play by Mauli Davis, the transfer from New Mexico State. Mauli Davis, Steve. There's that Oakland skyline. Product who's such a great person, and then a player on top of it. And I asked him, I said, How much fun are you having, man? And he goes, It is so much fun. I am having the best time. And, and he, he's a big part of that good time out there. 7 07 remaining in this ball game. Now counting down inside seven. Cody Pickett firing deep. And incomplete. That's when you need that, you, you know, intermediate ball over the middle, Steve. Instead of going up the sideline deep, you know, throw a nice little over under crossing route and either get a portion of it or if you if you break a tackle, you can get up. You might pick up, you know, 29 and a half yards to get a first down. Hey, you've got to credit Bill Doba, though, who yeah. did a marvelous job putting oh. together a defensive scheme to stop. An offense that was so hot. Derek McLaughlin. They're going after back, this. And they are. And he drops the football. That just pooches it through. A flag will be called. And the Cougars will get it. And they can put this game in the deep freeze. Boy, you know, New Heisel, I guarantee he's hot now, Steve, because what ends up happening, the punter, it, it the, the punting game has been a liability for the Huskies all year long. And and this right here, they end up showing pressure and then they don't illegal come. Kicking the ball by the, the offense. The penalty is going to be illegal kicking. That's the Garrow Ukrainian move the right there the to kick it. From the spot of the foul, that is a loss of down. It is first down, Washington State. So, so it's actually from the spot of the foul. They're just lucky it got out of the end zone. The ball is going to be spotted at the one and a half. Boy, that. He, that's not as a good punter, football. You have to know that. That's ugly you football. Either cover it or pick it up and try and punt it. Oh, he had enough time to pick it up and punt it. I mean, Newhouse is just saying, you've got to be kidding me. I know he's saying, use your head, guys. Come on. Just use your head. You had time. So, Washington in a dire situation with the Cougars facing a first and goal at the one and a half yard line. Matt Kegel now under the center and something went wrong. Flags yeah. all over the place. Yeah, something went wrong. The center never snapped the ball. And it looked like the whole left side moved. And that would have been Calvin Armstrong and Billy Knotts. There's that cadence. Full start. Offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. New quarterback, change in cadence, change in inflection. Let's go down to Rich for an update on Rich, on Jason Gesser. News is not good. They're looking at the fibula. They thought he could go. He got up, walked around, and they have sat him down. Gesser is out for the ball game. And yesterday, remember, guys, it's a question you always have to ask. You don't want to ask when we ask Mike Price. If your number one guy goes down, what happens with your number two guy? Remember Price's answer, nothing changes. The offense stays the same. Kegel was the guy who started the 2000 Apple Cup. 
threw for 122 but lost the game 51 to 3. They give it to Tippins. Tippins tries to get to the five. And right now, they may say they, the offense doesn't change, but Gesser might be putting it in the air here. And Mike Price knows that three points is better than no points. Well, and Matt Kegel might put it in the air here too, Steve. You see his numbers. On the on, in his career, 81 to 166, over a thousand, three touchdowns, two picks. But I agree with you in that you'd be able to run more of your offense right now. Five wides, three on the right, two on the left. But you got to score to take some of the pressure off the young QB. Kegel on the quarterback keeper. He is nailed, and the Cougars recover his fumble at the 11-yard line. See, that's a huge play, Manas Hopoi again, number 56, just. Stepping his game up right now, 6'4, 290 pounder, and he just hammered Kegel, jarred the ball out. Owen Biddle almost there. Watch it in the inside, the interior right here. Here's Hopoi. He's going to come around. Oh, he just gets leverage on the hit and puts Kegel on his back. And who ended up recovering it? Was that, that wasn't Fit, Fit Chappelle again, was it? Fit Chapel. I mean, I, if he recovered that again, my goodness. Third down, goal to goal. The junior Kegel. And time called by the officials. Timeout called by Washington. Timeout. Nice, nice call by the Huskies. 519 remaining. That's Mike a Price game. will talk with Matt Kegel, his quarterback. You know, Mike told us a story about Kegel, and we'll tell it to you when we come back. It is third down, goal to go. Kiga will hand off to Tippins, and you bet they are trying for the field goal. They just didn't want anything to go wrong and hold a seven point lead when Dunning can give them a 10 point edge. And Steve, the Huskies brought on Reggie Williams again, and he covered up the big receiver, Mike Bush. The number 19, Reggie Williams coming off the field right now, but the great receiver, of course, playing a little defense today, too. And you see that now in college football, the great, great ones are playing both ways. Dunning from 22. Henderson to hold. Oh. Good. Washington State has a 10 point lead, 441 from the Rose Bowl. It is deep. And Washington's bringing it back. And they fumble. And a fight for it. And another flag at the 23 yard line. And there's a flag. There's a flag that came in the pile from a distance, Steve. And Gordon Reese, though, the referee, did signal Husky football. He signaled it early. And he did confirm it was Husky football, though there is a flag that was thrown in by the umpire there, Walt Wolf. In the interim, run out to the family room, grab a cold beverage, and come back. 17 penalties in this game. And, and Washington came in to the game, the least penalized team in the Pac-10. They had only had 62 on the entire season. Watch this, see what happens. Derek Johnson leading the way, number 21. Nate Robinson, fumble. Balls on the ground. Illegal block in the back by the receiving team during the run back before the fumble. He somehow finds an opening, gets it to Paul Arnold, and Arnold. Makes something out of nothing. I mean, it looked like Pickett was going to be sacked. 
those of you in the Northwest the Apple Cup postgame special is coming up next after the game so please stay with us as we have the 90th meeting between Washington and Washington State and those guys are crazy because the temperature is in the 20s and they better get their vitamin C and echinacea out because they might be sick the next two weeks. Keep an eye on Fred Shavey's number six. Paul Arnold. Or is that Patrick Reddick? It's Patrick Reddick for the first down. You know, Bill Doba said the key to success was know where number one is all time, Reggie Williams, and stop big plays. They've only given up one big play in this game, and that was the deep ball to Reggie. And, and I know what people are saying right now. Why did the Huskies run no huddle like you know in the second half all second half and, or you know come out and start the game no huddle because right now they're moving the ball like they like they have it the whole game. Pick it oh. going deep Reggie Williams. Oh what a catch by Reggie Williams at the 15. Huge. Is he an All-American or what? He, he, he's the, he's the best. I haven't seen better. Let's put it that way. Look at him go, Steve. He's behind. He ends up making a jump over a great. Oh, look my. at Marcus Trufant. You can't defend it any better. Marcus Trufant takes a shot in the in the mug. Takes a shot in the face by Reggie Williams. Ten catches oh. now for Reggie Williams. Wow. 154 yards. Eight of those catches in the second half. Pickett. Looping end zone Williams incomplete and again great coverage by Marcus Trufant. You know Trufant might get the game ball even though the guy he covers has caught 10 passes. Yeah. Hey, you know, if it's not Marcus Trufant, you, you know that time I thought they kind of went to the well one one too many times there. You, Reggie Williams, you got to give the guy a break a, a little bit, but you know they probably said, hey, you know what, Trufant's just as tired, but at least Bill Doba, the defensive coordinator, he doubled him up that time. I don't blame him. So now the guy in the slot, Patrick Riddick. You want to work him, Riddick? Number 21. Pick it down the middle. And the flag's all over the place because the receiver, Eddie Jackson, was hit and knocked down as the ball was in the air. Yeah, Eddie Jackson just got mauled. He got clubbed. They came in on him, and Pickett got hammered too. Take a look. A little slant. He's not patient at all, Steve, and he gets hit. Payma, Carl Payma, the other corner, comes in, makes a play. Pass interference on a defense. That penalty is going to be declined. Roughing the passer on a defense, half the distance to the goal from the previous spot. Automatic first down. Wow. Wow. Ryan Long goes into zone blitz. Ike Brown comes in number nine and gives the 2003 Heisman favorite. I'm going to call him right now. Cody Pickett gives him a over hammer. 4,000 yards passing in this season. First and goal inside the 10. Pickett fires, and it is a touchdown to Charles Frederick. Hard to argue. Oh, Arnold. Hard, oh. Arnold, excuse me. Hard to argue with what Pickett's done tonight, Steve. He, you know, as you said earlier, no quarterbacks really had a good day, great day against the Washington State Cougars, and it's because they play such good defense. But right here, Pickett, short drop, three steps, and then he just sticks it in to Arnold. And Arnold's a nice target, runs good routes, long striding type player. Able to get there. You know, Steve, they got there so quick. There's only 313 left. I think they're not going to onside kick when they, when they get it back. They are within three. 20 to 17. Cougars trying to hold on. This is why they're going to kick it deep here. No onside kick because you want to drive it deep. You got a young quarterback. You want to pin him deep so your defense can come on, stop him, and then get the short field for your offense. Genius. Washington State is stuffed at the 11-yard line. Let's go down to Rich Walls. 
All right, just to update everyone again, Jason Gesser, they've looked at the fibula, and he will not return. They will x-ray it immediately after the game. They wanted to x-ray it right now, but Gesser wanted to stay on the sideline and watch the end of this game. Remember, he broke that same leg two years ago, but then it was the tibia. Tonight, it's the fibula. If it is broken, the trainer says you're looking at four to six weeks. On the other sideline, Washington's offense was sky high when they got off the field. Cody Pickett had his receivers around him and said, all we need is the ball back. And their defense, obviously, will try to get it to him right now. That's a great report, Rich, because he did suffer a, a broken leg on the same leg two years ago. And, you know, boy, whoa, those are some tough breaks. Goodness. More flags, and we've seen a lot of flags with Matt Kegel under center. Different cadence. Yep. The offensive yep. lineman hearing different call. You bet. Different voice. Well, and he just hasn't played a lot this year. The reality is Kegel just has not played a lot. He's only, heck, he's only thrown, he's only thrown 32 balls. He Ball completed 21. Offense. Five yards for the previous spot. He was Still recruited by both Washington and Washington State. And yep. you know what happened? In Montana, he was the best quarterback. Yep. He was driving a car with his cousin Ryan Leaf wearing a husky cap. Ryan Leaf grabbed the cap off his head and threw it out the window. He never wore a husky cap ever again. And here goes Tippins getting nailed near the seven yard line. Steve, this is dangerous for Washington State. And just as Washington was backed up in their own end and they had a complete malfunction on their kick on their punt team. And it cost them seven, it cost them three points essentially. I couldn't believe that Washington State didn't score seven on it, but it could cost WSU the same here. They're misfiring in their own end, and it's crucial. This is a crucial time of the game. You gotta make some yards and make the chains click. Another Pac-10 record tonight. Cody Pickett over 4,000 yards, single season yards. Think about it, man. That's more than Elway. That's more than Bledsoe. It's more than all these guys. I'm thinking about a guy who hasn't played much. Facing a second down and 15 has to make a big play here. Washington one timeout left. Kegel will throw and loops it left side. Pick. Intercepted. The freshman yep. Nate Robinson. Yep. They try to go up top to Mike Bush with one of those leaping catches. You know the jump ball. Nate Robinson's only 5'9", Steve. He's a little guy. But he plays big. Of course, his father, Jock Robinson, was one of the star running backs for the Huskies in their great years. Look at Robinson gives him great cushion, turns his hips, and Bush helps him out because Bush has fallen. So the big 6'6 six, six player can't get up, can't get his legs underneath him and jump. And Nate comes down with it, and Mike Price doesn't even want to look at this. And now the Washington State defense has to step up to the moment. We've seen some shocking upsets in this series history. Will we see one tonight with the number three team in the nation holding a three point lead, 244 to play? Pickett will run the ball, and Rich Alexis is smelled out beautifully by Fred Shavy. Here are FedEx air stats. They've gone 23 times to the receivers, wide out, 294 yards, so that's it. I mean, the tight ends haven't seen it much. The running backs five for 45. Yep. You know, Reggie Williams again catching a lot of those balls and taking for 154 for Reggie. Yeah, 154 taking up a lot of that yardage, and here he is once again, big number one, Steve, up at the top of the screen, and, and again, true font is on it. Matched up up top, those two guys. Pickett going left, completes it. Reddick gets out of bounds near the 25. Nice play by Reddick. He got as much as he could, and then he got out of bounds to stop the clock. They got a lot of time. Time is not a factor right now. 202. You got to be patient. Now you're in field goal range. John Anderson can hit this one. Okay, he can hit it approximately a 42 yarder from here. But now you can't have any negative plays. You got to keep positive gains here. In fact, he did get a first down. I, I don't think New Heisel wants to settle on three. Well, I don't think so either. But but what I'm saying is you can't take a loss. You cannot take a sack. You got you got to bring the hammer here a little bit too. You might want to run the ball. And they do. And they get it to the 20 yard line. Again, Washington has one timeout remaining inside two minutes to play. 
Well, perhaps the most shocking upset in the series came in 1982 when the Huskies carried a nine and one record and an eight game Apple Cup winning streak into the contest and needed only to defeat the two seven and one Cougar squad. But the inspired Cougars playing in the Apple Cup at Martin Stadium for the first time since 54 stunned the Huskies with a 24 20 defeat. Will it be the Huskies turn in 2002. Someone yep. ran the wrong route. Just a misread there. Eddie Jackson didn't see what Cody Pickett was seeing and he ended up throwing it out of bounds, which is a safe throw. That's okay. You saw John Anderson warming up on the sideline just a moment ago, the kicker. And then, you know, I always have a rule about kickers, Steve. I just think they ought to keep their helmet on when they're warming up because put, put yourself in as much of a game condition as you can. Reggie Williams down on the bottom of the screen. They're doubling him up there. Third and five. Pickett throws. Williams catches. First down at the 10 yard line. His 11th catch of the night and ninth of the second half. Washington's not playing for a tie, but you got a minute 16. The clock will begin to run as soon as the chains are set. Reggie Williams again. They did. They ended up blitzing. And they ended up blitzing number 26, Jeremy Bohannon, Steve. I thought they were going to double Reggie Williams. That would have been a wise move, but Bill Dobin knows more defense than I do. So Cougars need a big play by their defense. Pickett will run it. They stop Rich Alexis. It will be second down and 10 out. yards to go, or second and goal from the 10. Braxton Clement. Clock winding down to 45. Washington, Washington's got one in the bank. Okay, I was a little premature there. I thought, still thought they had two. My bad. End up. John Anderson has been clutch in the past. He has missed three field goals in this game. Pickett, right, knocked down beautifully by Fred Shavies. Oh. He knew where that pass was going, and this is the man that Mike Price says is the leader of our defense. Well, you know, he's, he is the leader. Last year, though, Steve, Apple Cup pregame warmups, Fred Shavies runs through the Huskies stretching. I imagine there was a few obscenities being shouted, too, but he ends up challenging the Huskies, and, and they ended up waxing the Cougars last year in the Apple Cup. This is the play, you could say play of the game, obviously, third and goal. You take a shot at the end zone here. You got two wides high, actually three wides high, two left. Pick it, loops it. Incomplete, Paul Arnold had it in his hands and Jeremy Bohannon knocked it out. Steve, this is not an easy kick. This is on the left hash mark. This is not in the middle of the field. Take a look, Paul Arnold. Bohannon punches the ball it. out. Yeah, he should have had it, but Bohannon ends up punching it with his left hand. Rams, this man, John Anderson, has had two game-winning field goals in his career. One with seconds left against USC and last year to beat Arizona State. This from 27 for the tie. I know it's... It is good. And this game is tied at 20 with 15 seconds to go. 15 seconds for overtime. 15 incredible seconds for Mike Price and Washington State. John Anderson, despite missing three field goals, clutch with seconds remaining. Second half, Washington State troubles. The fumble by Jason Gesser, the fumble by Mike Bush. The injury to Jason Gesser that knocked him out of the game and the interception that led to the game tying field goal by Nate Robinson. You know, and actually, John Anderson, look at Mike Price walking up. Saw that John Anderson actually missed four field goals tonight. The one he got bailed out on with the roughing the kicker. So I counted as a miss four, make two type of thing. And OT is going to be uh, Eagle against Pickett. How about a long return? They drive through, and this is Washington State bringing it out to the 32-yard line with 10 seconds remaining. Tim Galloway, number 35, in inside linebacker, reserve backer, and uh, special team stalwart tonight, making the tackle on Moore. 
So Matt Kegel, who has been unable to get Washington State any points when they've started in their own territory after replacing the All American candidate, Jason Gesser. Very good lined up. That's what you better do. And he will run the football, like you said, to Tippins. And they will just run it out. And we are going to overtime in the 2002 Apple Cup with Washington unranked against the number three team in the nation, Washington State, without their great quarterback, the Heisman candidate, Jason Gesser. Cody Pickett with a marvelous 92 yard drive to pull them within three and then execution down the end to get the three points because new Heisel said in overtime we've got the edge because we have the veteran quarterback against a guy who hasn't thrown the football yep. even 40 times this year. Overtime in the Palouse. The crowd rocking at Martin Stadium. Washington gets it first, and they will run the football to Braxton Clemens, who dives inside the 20 to the 17 yard line. So he makes eight big yards. It'll be second and two. I like Braxton Clemens, Steve. He's a, he's a solid runner, solid pass catcher out of the backfield. He can do it all, but right now, Washington State played one overtime game earlier this year. They beat the USC Trojans up here in OT. They have an opportunity to win it on their home turf again, but right now they got to slow down this Husky offense. They'll run it again to Clement, and he lunges forward for the first down at the 15 yard line. Let's see where the mark is. For those of you in the Northwest, the Apple Cup postgame special is coming up next after the game. There it is. Man, a lot to talk about the way this one has been played. And no. they have completely shut down. Washington has the yep. Washington State offense. Yep. For 40 minutes, they didn't score. Yep. The last time they got into the end zone was the 10 07 mark, the Cougars, yep. until the field goal. And on that field goal, they went minus four in the drive. Remember, they had a first goal at the two. Now Pickett with a first down. Cody fires Reggie Williams with the catch only gains three but that is catch number 12 for Reggie Williams and number 89 for Reggie this year Steve in the big rival games and, and you know the Huskies have taken some criticism this year they haven't had the season they wanted Williams single coverage and I wonder if Cody's checking off because Reggie has single coverage he looks that way the blitz is on Pickett sacked at the 22. Pauli Davis. Davis. Williams could not free himself from Trufant. Pauli Davis has has just played stellar again right in that middle linebacker spot Steve watch him come in. It's just an eight gap blitz and it's a little bit of a delayed blitz but he's got such great speed watch him number 58 and boy he runs well. That's that's big because now you got to get inside the five to get a first down. Blitz is on. Cody rolls away from pressure, flips it, incomplete. They will have to try for three. Well, this is why so many teams elect on the coin flip to take defense first because now you know. If John Anderson does put it through the uprights, you know what you have to beat. You got to get a field goal to tie, but if you score six, you, you win the game and you go home. Anderson has missed from 50, 51, and 34 in this game. And he, he missed. has made from 35 and 27. Well, and this will be from 34. And the rough in the kicker was about this distance as well. Anderson has it up. Good. And he nails it. 
missed his first three, made his last three, and in overtime, the Huskies have a 23-20 lead. He started shotgun, and he'll stay in shotgun. Illegal motion by the Cougars. They back up five. Fit Chapel, the right tackle moved. That is ten penalties now for Washington State, and Mike Price cannot afford this. No mistakes. Now they're backing up to the 30. This would make it a 47-yard field goal, even though it's first down. Steve, it comes back to what you got on your board, composure. You know, Mike Price said, be composed. Ever since Matt Kegel came in, they've shot themselves in the foot. They've jumped off sides. They've false started. They haven't adjusted to the young quarterback's cadence. They have it, his inflection and everything else. They bring pressure. Kegel goes deep. Broken up in the corner of the end zone intended for Mike Bush. And there's the true freshman, Nate Robinson, whose dad, Shot Robinson, was a great Husky. The executive producer of Fox Sports Net is Bill Borson. The coordinating producers of College Football Saturday are Roy Hamilton and Gary Garcia. Today's game produced by Dennis Kirkpatrick, directed by Doug Freeman. The College Football Saturday studio show produced by Loy Maxson, directed by, by Joe Woitis. Senior Vice President of Field Operations, Andrea Berry. Director of Field Operations is Debbie Kilmartin. Our ace in the tape room is Mark Wiedemann. It is second down and 15. Steve, go. Steve, here you go. Okay. Not working. You, you, not working. Now, you got to get a positive. You got to pick up 10 yards here. You've got to get to the 25 yard line. You're not going to get a first down at third and 16. You're not going to get this. Pick up 10 because you got to give Drew Dunning a, a look at the field goal. And, and I'm, I'm hoping for a, you know you're, you're looking if you're Washington State you're hoping for a field goal to tie it up so you don't you don't you don't go home a loser here you got to get you got to get him a little closer. Devar Darling right side. Kiko over the middle the enemy they do get about seven back now this will make it a field goal of some 41 42 yards by Drew Dunning his long this year has been 49 so it is well within his distance but he still has to make it to send it to the second overtime now yep, it'll be 42 yards and about six inches and line it up right off that hash and uh, here it is for the game for the Huskies at least to stay in the game Henderson to hold it is up Good. And we will go to the second overtime in the Apple Cup. OT, this is where you really want to be patient as a player. You want things, you want to slow things down. You know, right now, Washington's not lined up. I don't think they're lined up exactly where they want to be. Bobby Houck, the defensive back coach, waving his arms down on the sideline because they don't have everyone covered up. No one's on Sammy Moore down at the bottom of the in the slot. Right here. They've got a look to Jerome Riley, and he is met and just thrown to the ground by Greg Carruthers. How about that? Negative play again for Washington State. 
Got to play aggressive. Got to play down the field. You can't you can't play horizontal. Washington State had a big Mike Bush, six foot six on a small defensive back, Nate Robinson at five nine. Yeah. And it was single coverage. They've had a single coverage. This now it's Devard Darling six three on five nine Robinson, but they've rolled the safety over to help. Yeah. Three to the left. Keegan wants to go left, and it's caught by Bush. And Bush is not silly at the 20 yard line, but at least they get seven back. It'll be third and five. You know what Bush did so well there, Steve? Once he caught the ball, he got up the field. Watch him. Watch him sit down and catch the ball. And then when he catches it, watch what he does. He knifes back up between defenders. And even though he gets hammered by Carruthers, who's a linebacker in a DB's number, just he lunges ahead and gains some positive yards. So you got third and five. They haven't heard the chains click much here. They bring it, bring in the rush end Kelly, and here he comes from the left side. Kegel throws and completes the pass to the 15-yard line. It's fourth down and inches. Wow. You know, How yeah. tough can it be? It's tough, let me tell you. Washington's defense has been playing tough. They've been playing tough ever since. Well, they've been playing tough since about the, what, the second quarter. The second half, they played really well. So this field goal will come from 32 yards out by Drew Dunning to try and take the lead in the second overtime. Got it. It is 26-23. Cougars with the lead. Now it's Cody Pickett's turn. Now Washington's turn. Spread them out. Three wides up top, two on the bottom. Williams in the slot, Rams left side. They're throwing it to Reggie, incomplete. Trufant again, fine coverage. You know what I think I would do if I was Washington? The next time I ran five wides, I'd run a quarterback draw. Now, not, not on this play coming up, but maybe in a play or two, if I got a first down, I'd run five wides, and I, because they're so spread out on defense right now, Steve, and Cody Pickett can run now. He can run. And those are huge numbers he's putting up. He has thrown the football 53 times. Williams left again defended by Trufant. Pick it back. Fires. Complete 16 yard line. They'll need one more for a first down. It was Patrick Reddick on the catch. Hey, Steve, you know, Washington State plays so good. Look at this umbrella like coverage, okay? When when the play starts, watch those safeties and those corners, they all kind of sit and it's all read, read and react. Look at this. They all kind of break on the ball right now. And Reddick just did a nice job sitting in over the top. Let the play develop. He wasn't overly, you know, he didn't try to make too much happen. You might see that quarterback yeah. draw here. Yeah, I'd do it. Pickett's going to throw over the middle. Now he juggles. Now he gets rid of it. Throws and is caught. Touchdown, but two flags go down. He threw the pass. It hit off of a defender, came back to it, and Pickett is going to have to see this one come back. He caught his own pass. He caught his own forward pass. Wow. <laughs> Look at this. Pickett. Look, the ball goes in the air. That's that would be a pass or a fumble. That's a pass. His really? arm's going forward. Really, really. If the arm's going forward, it is a but, pass. But it, but it never was. I, this is one of these when you need the NFL flat. You, well, the yeah, his arm was yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm I'm with you. But it 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 was a fumble. But you're saying it was a the pass. quarterback made two forward passes by rule that wow. is an illegal forward pass against the offense five yards from the spot of the foul 
Loss of down. It'll be fourth down. So it is John Anderson time. Five yard penalty. Okay. Five yard penalty. From the spot. Loss of down. You couldn't ask for a worse scenario. You and couldn't ask. Now, this is a guy who missed his first three. Then he missed one, got rough in the kicker, and then he's made the last three. 46 yards out. He's got the range. No win. He hits it long enough. Got it. It is good. And we will go to a third overtime here in the Palouse. Washington will get it first in the third overtime. Pick it, play action pass, all kinds of time. Now it arose. He scrambles, and he will be sacked at the 33. How about the defensive coverage by the secondary Rams? How about the hits being put on Cody Pickett by Isaac Brown, number nine, and number 51, Will Durning. And Pickett, he's, you know, Pickett, he had time, though. I know, but you're right, Steve. Great coverage down the field. Dirty and Brown, though, just Rob Akey over there saying, nice job, and they should. That's that's phenomenal. Arnold Reddick to the left, Williams to the right, and Trufant is on him. And they're going to try and get a double on Reggie Williams down below, so you probably want to work up top. Pick it deep. Incomplete. Third down. And again, in the third overtime, the teams must, if they get in the end zone for the touchdown, they must go for a two-point conversion. The first team leading after the completed round wins. That last sack by Washington State was their 48th, and that ties the school record with one game to go. We're going to back in the set. We haven't had an overtime game for, like, what, two years? This is fun. Love it. Okay, third and 17. You got to pick up a portion of it. You can't get it all. You got to get half of it. You got to get eight, nine, ten yards. Give John Anderson a legitimate shot at a field goal. Pick it. Going deep for Reggie Williams, and it is incomplete. Wow. He really threw it away because if he throws that ball for Reggie with two, three red jerseys on him, it gets picked off. Then you're looking at Drew Dunning for a chance to win it but this will be a long field goal. Yes it will. This is going to be 48 49 yarder. Yep. 49 yarder. This is going to have to be a this is, this is what like a two iron. Well he is about made, 210 yards. He's made six from or thereabouts plus in his career and he hammers this one long wow. enough and it is good from 49. Now it's the Cougars' turn. John Anderson has just showed what you know. He's got he's got a little ice running through those veins, man. I'm telling you what, that is a cool customer that comes in and just hammers a 49 yard, hammers it. Come on, what up with that? That's what he just said, man. Johnny A, bring it. Watch him. He knew he had it right when he hit it. Knew he had it. You know, both of these coaches have to be proud of the way their teams have fought throughout oh, this game. Oh, you couldn't be anything but proud of all these guys. Now Kegel's turn. In for the injured Jason Gesser. And he will throw it. And game it over. is intercepted. Game over. Is that an incompletion? They're calling it an incompletion. I thought he had it. I thought Kai Ellis had it, Steve, and had possession. I thought he had it and had possession. Let's see if it touched oh, the turf. Here, here comes Gordon Reese. Hold on. If he made a pick uh, and the then linesman it was a fumble. came flying in saying incomplete, incomplete. Wow. 
You know, you got to back up all the players. You got to get all the players away from the refs. Ruling on the field is it was a backward pass. Washington recovered that backward pass, and the game is over. Oh, my goodness. I'm not sure it was a backwards pass. I thought it was an interception. Well, let's see it again. And then a fumble. That's you, what I thought. You hate to see officials decide. You know, it might have been a backwards game. pass. This isn't the angle we want, but watch Kai Ellis. He comes down on a hard slant. He knocks the ball up in the air. It looks to me as though he, well, we can't oh, no, he didn't recover it. The ball hit the ground. Yeah. But then, then he got the ball. Okay, so you know what? Steve, wow, Kai Ellis with the play of the game. What a great play. Washington with a stunning upset in Pullman. Huge. 29-26, the Huskies beat the Cougars with Jason Gesser out.